The tale unfolds beneath a moonlit sky, cloaking the night in darkness. A young maiden with silvery locks flees through the forest, her tearful cries betraying her fear. Haunted by past scoldings and the sting of a slap across her face, she bears the burden of being an illegitimate child, scorned by others due to her mother's profession as a prostitute. Each day leaves its mark upon her wounded countenance. Yet, as she runs, the girl yearns to mend her pain, for she possesses the gift of restoration. A sudden noise startles her, causing her to halt and cast a glance behind. A mesmerizing sight awaits her gaze, a towering inferno, consuming the leaves in its wake. Drawn closer, she ponders the nature of this energy, perhaps a fiery essence. A resounding boom shakes the air, and as she turns her eyes toward it, a mighty dragon emerges before her, its body scorched and ravaged by flames. Fear eludes the young girl, replaced by a deep concern for the dragon's well-being. Moving closer, she meets the dragon's gaze as it rouses, its roars echoing through the air. Instead of fleeing, she ventures to inquire about the creature's wounds, offering her assistance. The dragon responds with an intense roar, seemingly displeased. Unfazed, she smiles and reassures the dragon that she can heal its wounds. With determination, she channels her healing power, mending the dragon's injuries with great effort. Astonished, the dragon observes the young girl's actions. Although the wounds were vast, her unwavering resolve triumphs, and the dragon's injuries are completely healed. Overwhelmed, the girl loses her balance and collapses to the ground. Turning his gaze upon his savior, the dragon rises, transforming into a man, a striking figure with red eyes, dark flowing hair, and adorned in dragon armor. As he gazes upon the unconscious young girl, he commends her fearlessness. Gradually, she opens her eyes, straining to hear the man's words as he carries her in his arms. A decade passes. The young girl has blossomed into a woman of 20. Unfortunately, the hair dye applied by the maids causes an irritating rash on her delicate skin. Sold off to an elderly king with a preference for blondes, her hair is forcibly transformed. She ponders the possibility of escaping 10 years ago, but her encounter with the dragon left her weakened. The maids forcefully apply makeup to conceal the rash on her face. Her stepmother ridicules her lack of beauty, concerned that the king will not be pleased with her appearance. However, her stepbrother assures his mother, revealing a substantial dowry he acquired from the tire's tomb. Shocked, his mother attempts to explain further, but their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the deafening roar like a thunder, accompanied by the cascade of rubble from the roof. Peering out the window, the girl catches sight of dragons attacking their stronghold. Knights storm the castle, responding to the king's command to engage in battle. The war commences, but the tide appears to favor the Tayar faction. As the king enters the fray, the girl remains at the window, transfixed by the sight of the Tayar slaying castle dwellers. In that moment, her gaze meets the eyes of the king. Overwhelmed with fear, she instinctively retreats into hiding. Unmasking himself, the king commands his knights to set the castle ablaze, and the truth is revealed he is the very same dragon, the one the young girl had healed. The assault by the dragon tribe wreaks havoc upon the castle and its inhabitants. A castle knight informs the stepmother that the intent of the dragon tribe appears to be annihilation. Reacting swiftly, she commands her knight to surrender and raise the white flag. Seizing the chaos as an opportunity, the girl stealthily escapes, driven by her determination not to fail again. The castle's residents surrender, hoping for mercy from the king of Tayar. To their shock, he orders his tribe to slay them all and display their heads upon the castle gate. As the moment approaches for the stepmother and her son to face their fate, they tremble as the king draws near. The son pleads frantically for forgiveness, promising to return the stolen treasures. Yet the king remains unmoved, 
issuing the command for his people to kill and incinerate all the humans present. Gripped by immense fear, the stepmother desperately seeks an escape from the imminent death before her. Suddenly, she calls out to the king of Tyar, offering her precious daughter as proof of her beauty, claiming that King Brian himself has chosen her daughter as his lover. At her words, the Tyar's king turns his gaze, confirming the stepmother's assertion that her daughter is King Brian's beloved. Aware of the ongoing war between King Brian and the king of Tyar, the stepmother sees an opportunity and readily agrees, stating that King Brian desires her daughter. King Tyar inquires about the whereabouts of the mentioned daughter, only for the stepmother to realize that her daughter is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, the runaway girl descends the tower, freezing in her tracks as the sound of wings flapping reaches her ears. To her astonishment, the dragon arrives and takes her into its grasp, soaring above the gate adorned with the heads of the castle's knights. The dragon returns her to her stepmother's side, releasing its grip, causing the girl to tumble to the ground. Before her stands, the king of Tayar, his gaze fixed upon her. He questions whether she is the girl the stepmother offered. Observing her, the king is struck by her mesmerizing eyes, evoking memories of the past, when a young girl aided him, possessing eyes identical to hers. He wonders if she is the same girl, though her hair color now differs, suggesting she may be someone else entirely. Extending his spear to tilt the girl's chin, the king poses a question. Will she become his bride, or will she and all the castle's inhabitants meet their demise at his hands? Overwhelmed by the fear of impending death, the girl reluctantly accepts the offer to become the bride of Tyar's king. To her astonishment, the king draws near, kneeling down before her and inquiring about her name. Nervously, she stammers that her name is Lucina. The king affirms that in the language of Brian, her name means moon, to which she nods in agreement. He remarks that her name befits her appearance. Introducing himself as Hakan, he leans in and whispers in her ear that he forgives her. Rising to his feet, Hakan proclaims the need for a priest to officiate their wedding ceremony. Turning his gaze towards a nearby priest, he commands him to lead the ceremony as Hakan and Lucina are to be wed immediately. This surprises both Lucina and her stepmother. Hakan instructs the priest to inform King Brian about his marriage to Lucina once the ceremony is concluded, revealing that King Brian's intended bride has been taken away by Hakan, the king of Tear. Hakan claims that a decade ago, King Brian had sent a dragon slayer to kill them, and now King Brian must pay the price. He intends to use Lucina as a catalyst to incite war between Brian and Tyar. The wedding ceremony between Hakan and Lucina is on the verge of commencing, with the trembling priest leading the way. The atmosphere is tense and somber, prompting Hakan to order his people to fetch some flowers. A beautiful bouquet is prepared, and Hakan holds it out to Lucina, telling her to take it. Understanding the tradition of Brian, where the bride carries the flower bouquet. Lucina's hand trembles in fear as Hakan places it in her grasp. Satisfied with Lucina holding the bouquet, Hakan turns to the priest, signaling the start of the ceremony. And so, the ceremony begins. The nervous priest declares that it is time for the bride and groom to exchange a kiss as part of the wedding vow and to conclude the ceremony. This announcement shocks Lucina. Hakan wraps his arm around Lucina's waist, drawing closer to her, and she is taken aback by his proximity. Hakan instructs her to close her eyes, as she will faint shortly afterward. Their lips draw nearer, and as Hakan kisses her, Lucina tastes a mixture of blood and sweat on his lips, before suddenly losing consciousness. One of his knights playfully teases Hakan, remarking that he only needed to kiss Lucina and not make her faint. This makes Hakan wonder if his kiss is somehow lethal. Hakan carries the unconscious Lucina and places her on his horse, declaring his forgiveness towards her family. He warns them that any attempt to harm Tayar's precious gem again 
will result in their castle being wiped off the map without a trace. With that, Tyr's tribe departs from the castle, leaving behind the chaos. With Tyr gone, the stepmother asserts that they must reclaim Lucina, shouting to her son that King Brian has promised a great fortune if they bring Lucina back to him. This revelation shocks the son, who questions how they can retrieve Lucina when they do not possess a single knight. The stepmother declares that they must hire mercenaries to aid them in their mission. Lucina awakens with a start, her surroundings unfamiliar as she gazes out of the window. She catches the attention of a knight from Tyre's tribe, who promptly informs Hakan of her awakening. Hakan halts and turns his head, confirming Lucina's consciousness. Anxious, Lucina swiftly closes the curtain. Hakan then instructs his people to prepare a meal and set up camp. Inside the carriage, Lucina still feels uneasy. But to her surprise, the carriage door suddenly opens. Hakan inquires about her well-being, expressing his surprise at her sudden fainting spell earlier. Trembling, Lucina assures him that she is fine. Hakan extends his hand, inviting Lucina to join him for a meal. However, she declines, insisting on staying inside the carriage. Yet, her stomach betrays her with a loud growl. Lucina feels embarrassed, but Hakan chuckles, stating that his wife is shy. He suggests they step outside as he plans to light a bonfire to keep her warm. The aroma of the food entices Lucina, and she reaches out for Hakan's hand, stepping out of the carriage. As they walk toward the camp, Tayer's knight leads them to a ready-made tent. Hakan thanks the knight and dismisses him, urging Lucina to sit inside the tent for a softer seating arrangement. Hakan removes his cloak and wraps it around Lucina, providing her with warmth. As she wears the cloak, Lucina feels the comforting embrace. Hakan offers her a meal, a tuna-stuffed bread that emanates a delightful scent. Unintentionally, Lucina inhales deeply, recalling how she only had dried or old bread in Baron Berg's house. Observing her, Hucken assures her that the bread is not poisoned. Gathering her composure, Lucina begins to eat. The taste of the bread astounds her. It is delicious beyond belief. Seeing her eat heartily, Hucken advises her to eat slowly to avoid any stomach ache. He then offers her a glass of milk, assuring her that it is also safe to drink. As Lucina sips the milk, memories flood back of the days in the castle where she had to toil relentlessly for a meager breadcrumb. She can hardly fathom the fact that she can now enjoy such good food. Curious about Lucina's age, Hakan asks her while she still has her mouth full. Lucina responds by gesturing with her finger that she is 20 years old. Hakan's expression darkens slightly. Realizing that Lucina is too young to have been King Brian's intended bride, he reminisces about the previous war when King Brian had sent a dragon slayer, which resulted in the loss of his beloved brother, the former king of Tayar. If circumstances had allowed, Hakan would have gone mad and slain King Brian, were it not for his own injuries at the time. He asks Lucina if she regrets not being King Brian's bride. But she shakes her head, confirming that she is better off where she is. Suddenly, Lucina inquires about Tyar, prompting Hakan to expect tears and pleas to return to her family. However, she remains remarkably composed. Breaking off another piece of bread, Hakan explains that the people of Brian perceive Tyar as a haven for monsters, but that perception is incorrect. With a smile, he offers another slice of bread to Lucina, informing her that she will discover the truth for herself. For some reason, Lucina would rather live with Hakan than in Berg. Lucina happily savors the bread, prompting Hakan to inform her that the food will only get better when they arrive in Tayar. Yet, Lucina insists that the current meal is already more than enough. This leads Hakan to realize that Lucina is different from other noble ladies. She possesses humility. He then suggests that Lucina rest after eating, as he needs to remove his armor. Hearing this, Lucina is taken aback. As Hakan begins to unfasten his clothes, Lucina turns around and covers her head, informing Hakan that she will wait outside. 
Hakan smiles in response, suddenly lifting her up and questioning why she should wait outside when they are husband and wife. Moreover, they will be sleeping together from now on. Lucina is shocked by Hakan's statement. Hakan proceeds to explain that, in Brian, the husband and wife share intimacy on their first night of marriage. Lucina blushes and becomes nervous upon hearing him mention intimacy. Lucina's sudden crying catches Hakan off guard, causing him to reassure her that he was only trying to confirm something. In Tayar, it is customary for couples to engage in intimacy before getting married when the woman is pregnant. Hearing this revelation, Lucina becomes even more shocked. Trying to calm her down, Hawken asks if being with him is better than being King Brian's bride. Still trembling, Lucina confesses that she is simply afraid. Understanding her fear, Hawken swiftly stands up, turns away, and assures her that he won't do anything to her. He suggests that Lucina should rest while he sleeps outside. Tyre's knight, Tehran, is surprised to find Hakan outside and questions why he left the bride alone. Hakan joins Tehran, explaining that he chose to sleep outside because forcing Lucina into anything after she was kidnapped could make her ill. He also warns Tehran to be careful with his words since Lucina is now his wife. Tehran finds it hard to believe, noting that Hakan has changed because of Lucina. Previously, Hakan was known for being cold-hearted, but now he even forgave the Berg people who stole Tayar's treasure. Hakan shares with Tehran that whenever he sees Lucina, he is reminded of his savior from before. He believes the girl must be somewhere near the Berg castle, and decided to spare the Berg people as a way to repay the girl who saved him. The following morning, Lucina wakes up to the sunlight filtering through the tent. Remembering she didn't wash her face before falling asleep, she decides to find water nearby to freshen up. As she washes her face, she notices her reflection in the water, realizing that her rash looks worse without the makeup covering it. However, she remembers Hakan's words and resolves not to heal herself, so that Hakan won't touch her. Suddenly, someone approaches from behind. It's a group of kidnappers sent by Baroness Berg, Lucina's stepmother. Lucina is terrified as she never wants to return to that place. They take her into the nearby forest, and soon it starts pouring rain. According to legend, the Puka elves bring rain when they are not offered peanuts. Drenched by the rain, Lucina feels cold. The kidnappers notice her trembling and, upon seeing the rash on her face, mistakenly believe she has a contagious disease, deciding to abandon her. However, before they can do so, an arrow pierces one of the kidnappers, knocking him down. It turns out that Tehran and Hakan have come to her rescue. Hakan sets Lucina free his expression filled with concern as he inquires about her well-being. Despite seeing Hakan covered in blood, Lucina no longer feels afraid. In fact, his presence brings her a sense of comfort. Hakan drapes the cloak over Lucina and gently places his hand on her head, realizing that she is running a fever. He expresses regret, feeling that he may have been slightly delayed, and apologizes to Lucina. Tenderly lifting her in his arms, Hakan assures her to hold on as they will soon emerge from the forest. Lucina experiences a sense of relief, grateful that she did not return to the Berg house, as her desire to be with Hakan permanently strengthens. While wiping her face, Lucina gazes at her reflection in the mug she holds, noticing that her rashes have worsened due to her fever giving the impression of a genuine illness. Contemplating whether to heal her rash, a mysterious voice unexpectedly advises her against doing so. Startled, Lucina turns around and discovers a little elf standing beside her, introducing himself as Puka. Engaging in playful banter, Lucina teases Puka about being the small elf responsible for rain if peanuts are not offered. However, Puka swiftly warns Lucina against utilizing her healing power, emphasizing its rarity and the attention it could attract. Puka observes that Lucina has become more talkative and inquires about her previous reticence. 
Lucina confesses her nervousness when faced with many people, fearing their anger and potential harm if she were to speak her mind. She admits feeling more at ease conversing with non-humans. Just as they converse, Hacken's voice interrupts, asking permission to come inside. Recognizing the need to depart, Puka hastily bids farewell to Lucina. As Hacken enters the tent, he is shocked to see the rash on Lucina's face. Approaching her, he confirms her fever by touching her forehead and asks if she is feeling unwell. Hakan instructs Turan to summon the physician for assistance. Turan enters the tent to assess the situation, but quickly pulls Hakan away upon noticing the rash on Lucina's face. He informs Hakan that it could be smallpox. Panicking, Lucina tries to explain that it's not a disease, but rather a reaction to hair dye. However, Turan draws his sword and warns Lucina to keep her distance. Hakan intervenes, instructing Turan to lower his sword. He assures Turan that it's not smallpox and turns his attention back to Lucina, encouraging her to speak her mind. However, Lucina struggles to articulate her explanation clearly, nervously mentioning that it's a sulfur reaction from the hair dye and that her fever is due to the rain. Tehran fails to comprehend Lucina's explanation as she stammers through it. Feeling unheard, Lucina stops trying to explain. Tehran suggests that they couldn't take Lucina to Tayar if she has a contagious disease. Lucina senses her life is in danger and contemplates using her healing spell to cure her rash. But she remembers Puka's earlier warning. While Lucina grapples with her decision, Hakan advises her to stay calm and speak slowly so he can understand. Tehran cautions Hakan against getting closer to Lucina, but Hakan assures him that it's not smallpox, pointing out the different symptoms. Turning to Lucina, he gently encourages her to speak, assuring her that nobody will get angry with her. Determined to explain, Lucina puts in her best effort while Hakan attentively listens, ultimately reaching a conclusion. The rash on Lucina's face is a result of the hair dye, worsened by the rain-induced fever. Putting his sword away, Turan is convinced by Hakan's explanation. Hakan mentions that if Lucina truly had smallpox, he who kissed and hugged her would have also fallen ill. Lucina gazes at Hakan, feeling flattered that someone has taken her seriously for the first time. Hakan gently places Lucina inside the tent, and one of his knights informs him that the kidnapper was acting on Baroness Berg's orders. Enraged, Hakan vows to return to Berg Castle and punish them. Concerned for the innocent people who might suffer, Lucina grabs Hakan's arm and pleads with him. Hakan is puzzled by Lucina's unexpected worry for others over her own family. Realizing Hakan's confusion, Lucina kneels down and begs for forgiveness on behalf of her family. Concealing her true identity as an illegitimate child, Hakan instructs her to rise, lifts her up, and playfully suggests that he can only forgive those who touch his wife if she offers something in return. Lucina promises to do whatever he desires. With a smile, Hakan reveals his request, a kiss from Lucina. Hesitant at first, Lucina summons her courage and kisses Hakan on the lips. As they part, Hakan feels overjoyed and embraces Lucina. He then instructs his knight to present the kidnapper's head to Baroness Berg as a warning against further encroachments on Tyar. As Lucina lies on the mat, Hakan sits beside her, ensuring her safety as promised. Lucina expresses her gratitude, but Hakan playfully teases her, suggesting that she can thank him by kissing him again. Surprised, Lucina reacts, but Hakan was merely teasing her, prompting him to tell her to rest while he watches over her from outside. Hearing Hakan humming, Lucina wonders what brings him such happiness. Lucina awakens to the sensation on her forehead and opens her eyes to find Hakan tending to her fever by her side. As they arrive in Tayar, Lucina is in awe of the breathtaking Tayar castle. The people in Brian had held misconceptions about the Tayar tribe, believing them to be primitive cave dwellers who subsist on wild animals. Turan opens the carriage door, assisting Lucina as she alights from the carriage. 
As she takes her first steps, a scent overwhelms her, causing dizziness. Hakan notices and firmly holds her arm, inquiring about her well-being. He explains that it takes time for humans with a strong earth energy to adjust to the scent of Tayar with a strong fire energy. The people of Tayar warmly welcome the return of their king, and seeing Hakan accompanied by a stranger, they are curious about Lucina's identity. The priest of Tayar greets them and, upon sensing Lucina's earth energy, suggests the need for her purification. But as the priest approaches her, she trembles in fear and quickly hides behind Hakan. Hakan reassures her that the priest's intentions are welcoming, not harmful. As the priest sprinkles holy water on her head during the purification ritual, Lucina feels as if the water also soothes her rash. Once the purification is complete, Hakan and Lucina are welcomed inside. Upon entering the castle, a woman rushes to greet Hakan and leans on him, expressing her joy at his long-awaited return. The woman named Garrett questions if Lucina is the captive brought from Brian and shows her displeasure. However, Hakan introduces Lucina as his bride, whom he took from Berg. Garrett is taken aback by this revelation. Expressing her discontent with Hakan's statement, she points out the yellowish hue on Lucina's dress, assuming it to be a symptom of a disease. Lucina clarifies that it's merely the faded color of her hair dye. As Hakan observes Lucina's hair, he wonders if her true hair color is silver. Hakan then assures Garrett that there's no cause for concern. But Garrett counters, stating that her worry is not for Lucina, but for Hakan himself. With an intense gaze, Garrett implies that Lucina may not be capable of shouldering the same obligation as she has done. As Lucina inquires about the obligations Garrett mentioned, Hakan deflects the question and suggests that she change her dress. He then commands Garrett to provide Lucina with a maid. An attendant named Titi is tasked with accompanying Lucina to the palace. Overhearing Titi mention the late queen to Garrett, Lucina speculates that Garrett might have been the wife of Hakan's deceased brother from a decade ago. Introducing herself as Lucina's personal maid, Taikai clarifies that the room they are in is not the queen's palace, since Lucina has not yet borne a descendant of Tayar's king. Lucina comprehends that the obligation Garrett referred to is the expectation for her to give birth. While changing her clothes, Lucina recalls the purifying holy water from before, which not only faded her hair dye, but also healed her rash. Curious, she asks Titi if it is possible to obtain the holy water again. After Titi leaves the room, a small bird enters and begins to speak, transforming into the elf Puka. Delighted by Puka's return, Lucina expresses her comfort in Tayar compared to Berg. However, Puka raises concerns about Lucina having a child with Hakan. Lucina admits her worries, but quickly dismisses the thought, deciding to think about it later. Just then, Titi returns with permission to use the holy water. Meanwhile, Hakan removes his armor while Tehran informs him that the Dragon Knight has returned from Berg Castle and carried out Hakan's orders. Tehran questions Hakan's decision to forgive Berg and refrain from seeking revenge on the Brian King. Hakan affirms his stance, but he has one matter to confirm. He reveals that a girl saved him ten years ago and ponders if she might still reside near Berg. Before decimating the people in Brian, Hakan intends to rescue the girl first. He instructs Tehran to locate the girl before crushing Brian and also to investigate whether Lucina is truly Baroness Berg's daughter. Once Hakan assigns Tehran his tasks, he declares his intention to cleanse himself in the hot springs and states that he does not require a servant. In the hot spring, Lucina immerses herself in the purifying holy water, marveling at how it restores her hair to its natural color and heals her rash. Suddenly, she hears footsteps approaching and turns around to find Hakan entering. Lucina hastily conceals herself, fearing that Hakan might discover her presence. Hakan detects a presence behind him and turns around to discover someone hiding. Annoyed, 
He questions the person's identity and asserts that he does not require a servant. Fearing Hawken finds her, Lucina decides to conceal herself beneath the water. As Hawken approaches, Lucina attempts to swim away, prompting Hakan's impatience. He reaches out and grasps Lucina's arm just as she stumbles, preventing her from falling. Enchanted by Lucina's true appearance, Hakan marvels at the beauty before him. Captivated by her mesmerizing eyes, he confirms if she is indeed Lucina. Hakan ponders whether Lucina is the girl who saved him ten years ago, but suddenly Lucina trembles in fear and begs for forgiveness. Feeling confused, Hakan quickly dons his bathrobe and drapes one over Lucina, reassuring her that no one will harm her. He also assures her that she has done nothing wrong and that he had mistaken her for someone else. Gently touching Lucina's cheek, Hakan apologizes for frightening her. He then pulls her closer, advising her not to reveal her vulnerability to others, as she will eventually become the queen of the palace after giving birth to Hakan's child. Hakan contemplates whether Lucina is truly the same person who saved him, as the girl was incredibly brave. Judging by the girl's appearance before, she didn't appear to be a noble's daughter. And if Lucina is indeed the girl, she must have already healed her own rash. Uncomfortable with the close proximity, Lucina requests permission to leave. However, Hawkins suddenly embraces her from behind, tenderly carrying her in his arms and offering to escort her. Confused, Lucina inquires about their destination. With a mischievous grin, Hakan assures her that they are heading to their room and playfully asks if she is still afraid of him. Feeling overwhelmed, Lucina's heart races, leaving her speechless. The servants aid Lucina in getting ready. Titi admires Lucina's hair, while other servants express concern about her slim figure and question her ability to endure the first night with Hakan. Titi offers support to Lucina, boosting her self-assurance. Contemplating the servants' remarks, Lucina wonders if Hakan will cause her harm on their initial night together. As Lucina enters the room, Hakan becomes mesmerized by Lucina's beauty. He praises her hair, causing Lucina to blush as she receives such a compliment for the first time. In a soft voice, Hakan whispers in her ear, inquiring whether she would faint if he kissed her. Lucina shakes her head, indicating that she will be able to handle it. Drawing closer, Hakan gently kisses Lucina's lips. Noticing her gaze on his body, Hakan explains the significance of his tattoo and reassures her not to flee. He then asks if she desires to spend the night with him. As Hakan lays Lucina on the bed, she recalls the words of the servants earlier, wondering if Hakan will harm her. The fear of being hurt by him terrifies and shakes Lucina. Sensing her fear, Hakan stops and turns away, assuring her that he is not angry. Suddenly, Hakan asks if she wants to return to Berg. Lucina states that she doesn't want to go back, as she is now Hakan's wife. Stammering, she declares that she will give birth to his child and become the queen of Tayar. Hearing her words, Hakan asks if she understands the significance of being Tayar's queen. Lucina appears perplexed, and Hakan explains that it means she must be prepared to sacrifice her life for him and Tayar. Lucina is left speechless, contemplating the weight of those words. Hakan stands up, dons his robe, and states that he won't sleep with her until she is ready for it. He tells Lucina to rest and leaves her alone in the room. As Lucina and Titi pass by, they overhear the servants gossiping about Lucina being left alone in the room and Hakan not visiting her afterwards. The servants mention rumors of Hakan's impending marriage to Garrett, suggesting that Hakan has had feelings for Garrett since childhood. Lucina looks surprised upon hearing this revelation. While sitting alone in her room, Lucina contemplates the rumors she overheard, underestimating herself and comparing herself to Garrett. She wonders if Hakan, being attracted to a beautiful girl like Garrett, could never be interested in someone as pitiful as her. Suddenly, Titi barges in and informs Lucina that Hakan has returned to the palace. They set off to greet Hakan, 
but on their way, Garrett calls out to them from behind. Garrett remarks that she almost didn't recognize Lucina with her true appearance, and mocks Lucina, stating that Hakan must have been annoyed and left because Lucina speaks like a fool. Garrett grabs Lucina's arm, commenting on her skinny physique, and warning her that she will surely die if she sleeps with Hakan. Confused, Lucina asks Garrett to explain. Garrett reveals that Tayar's palace is the graveyard of women, and it's rare for a woman to survive after receiving the dragon's energy. She advises Lucina to leave if she wants to live. Suddenly, Hakan approaches from behind, noticing Garrett talking with Lucina. Garrett informs Hakan that she was just giving advice to Lucina and questions Hakan's choice of bride, warning that weak people like Lucina will only die in vain. Hakan thanks Garrett for her advice, but asserts that choosing his bride is his own concern. He calls Lucina to come with him. During their walk, Hakan explains to Lucina that he was busy and couldn't visit her. He asks if there's anything bothering her or if she has any questions for him. Lucina has many questions, but doesn't know where to start. Nervously, she asks about being the queen and its relation to her life. Hakan wonders if Lucina is still scared by his previous words. He clarifies that being the dragon's bride means she must be willing to risk her life. Saying that from Lucina's perspective, Hakan may appear similar to King Brian. Lucina grabs Hakan's arm and claims that he is different, explaining that he is the one who listens to her. Hakan questions why no one listened to her, despite being the only daughter of Berenberg. Lucina admits that it's because she speaks like a fool. Hakan touches her hair and remarks that the people of Berg are strange. He kisses her hair and tells her that if he had a beautiful daughter like her, he would cherish her and listen to whatever she says. Suddenly, a guard informs Hakan that Adar is missing, prompting Hakan to apologize to Lucina and says he must go now. While seeing Hakan's off, Lucina is still flattered by the compliment Hakan gave her earlier, causing her to blush. Studying her reflection in the mirror, Lucina is overwhelmed by Hakan's compliment on her beauty, experiencing it for the first time in her life. Suddenly, she remembers Garrett's words about not being able to survive after receiving the dragon's energy and Hakan's explanation about the risks involved in becoming a mate of the dragon race. Still uncertain about the meaning behind those words, Lucina turns to Titi and asks her to explain what receiving the dragon's energy entails. Taidai hesitates at first, unsure if she should reveal this information to Lucina since Hakan hasn't informed her yet. Eventually, she clarifies that it means becoming pregnant and giving birth to a healthy child for the dragon race. Lucina inquires if she will die after giving birth to which Titi reluctantly responds that it's common because it's not an easy task to give birth to a strong child of the dragon race. Lucina wonders if Garrett believed she would immediately die due to her slender physique. Titi further elaborates that whoever gives birth to the king's child becomes a queen since it's a challenging endeavor. Garrett herself was once a lowly maid from a humble background, but became a queen after giving birth to the late king's child. Lucina realizes that all she needs to do is have a baby, and her background won't matter anymore. Meanwhile, Hakan pays a visit to his mother, Adar, who's lying on her bed. Hakan assumes that Adar sought him out because he had been away at war, and she was concerned about losing her remaining son. Adar, Hakan's mother, once a revered queen celebrated for giving birth to two sons of the dragon race, and receiving the blessings of the fire god, has since succumbed to madness. Consumed by grief over the loss of her beloved son, the late king and Hakan's brother, ten years ago, she has refused to accept reality and give him a proper burial. Adar fears that his body will be taken away, and thus, her son has been preserved in a sacred cave, where she believes he will awaken and open his eyes. Hakan returns to the main palace, where Tehran questions why he didn't go to Lucina's place. Hakan replies that he's not in the mood at the moment, 
causing Turan to raise his voice and urge Hakan to consider Garrett instead if he has no interest in Lucina. Turan expresses concern about the bloodline of the Guardian Dragon coming to an end, if Hakan doesn't have a child. Hakan asserts that he has already chosen his mate. However, Turan elaborates, explaining that due to the difficulty of conceiving a child of the dragon race, the late king spent his life with numerous women until he finally had a child with Garrett. Turan advises Hakan to follow the same path. Hakan, infuriated by Turan's suggestion, raises his voice and confronts Turan, accusing him of suggesting that Hakan should witness countless women's deaths, stating fiercely that he could never do such a thing. Turan questions why Hakan doesn't consider remarrying Garrett, emphasizing that she has already given birth to a child of the dragon race, making her chances of success the second time around quite high. As Turan speaks, Hakan's mind drifts back to his childhood memories when his brother showed him how much he loved Garrett. Hakan expresses his dislike for Garrett and lets out a sigh, pondering why the dragon race must take so many women's lives to conceive a child. Turan explains that the dragon race serves as guardians, keeping Tayar in peace by instilling fear in the Bryan people with their fiery nature. Turan reminds Hakan of his duty as the king and urges him to go to Lucina. However, Hakan worries about Lucina's well-being, recalling her as his savior every time he sees her. Meanwhile, Titi bursts into Lucina's room, informing her that Hakan is on his way to see her. Surprised by the news, Lucina watches as Hakan enters the room with a flushed face, carrying two glasses and a bottle of wine, and asks if she is still awake. Approaching Lucina, Hakan compliments her beauty and asks if she felt sad when he didn't visit. Seeing Lucina blush, Hakan suddenly kisses her. As they share the kiss, Lucina feels a warm sensation and nervously asks for more, which prompts Hakan to inquire if she is no longer afraid of him. Lucina, wrapping her arms around Hakan's neck, kisses him in response. While they continue kissing, Hakan carries Lucina to the bed and places her there. Seeking reassurance, Hakan asks if Lucina is now prepared to risk her life for him and Tayar. As Lucina ponders her response, she abruptly asks Hakan if she is pretty. Drawing closer to Lucina, Hakan assures her that she is indeed beautiful. However, the rumors about Hakan and Garrett suddenly flood Lucina's mind and she asks Hakan if he also has feelings for Garrett. Confused by her question, Hakan wonders what she means, emphasizing that he is with Lucina now. Lucina, feeling nervous, continues to mention Garrett and her doubts about Hakan's feelings. Annoyed by the topic, Hakan warns Lucina that he will leave if she keeps bringing up Garrett. Believing that Hakan didn't deny it, Lucina expresses her belief that Garrett is prettier than her. This statement infuriates Hakan, who angrily questions if Lucina truly wants him to go. Disappointed, Hakan leaves Lucina, stating that she should simply tell him if she doesn't want to be his bride, instead of provoking his anger. Lucina is left unable to properly articulate her thoughts, feeling bewildered by the situation. Days later, Garrett's servants inform her that Hakan has not visited Lucina's room since their last encounter. Assuming that Lucina must be frightened of Hakan, Garrett feels a sense of arrogance, believing that Hakan will soon lose interest in Lucina because he dislikes cowardly women. Encouraged by her loyal servants, who are aware of Hakan's admiration for Garrett since childhood, but acknowledges that he suppressed his feelings due to his brother, Garrett confidently asserts her position. Reflecting on her past encounters with Hakan, particularly the times she caught him stealing glances at her, only for him to blush and shy away when she looked back. Garrett is convinced that Hakan will eventually come to her and choose her as his mate. She firmly declares that she will not allow anyone but herself to be with Hakan. Feeling remorseful about her previous interactions with Hakan, Lucina regrets not expressing her true feelings and instead provoking his anger. Realizing that she needs to change her approach, 
Lucina turns to Titi for assistance, seeking guidance on how to rectify the situation. Titi is taken aback by Lucina's request to help her improve her speech. Surprised but willing to assist, Titi suggests practicing with her to enhance Lucina's speaking skills. Emphasizing the importance of avoiding stammering while talking, Tai Tai opens up about her own background to create a comfortable environment for Lucina to communicate. However, their practice is interrupted when a servant knocks on the door, informing Lucina that Garrett has summoned her. Inside the Queen's Palace, Titi encourages Lucina to apply their practice techniques. Garrett explains that she called Lucina to present her with a suit for an upcoming royal event. The suit happens to be black, which traditionally symbolizes mourning in Brian. Lucina is curious if the symbolism differs in Tayar, but then confirmed by Titi's question to Garrett about the suit's resemblance to a funeral outfit. Garrett clarifies that she personally selected the suit for Lucina because she noticed Lucina's avoidance of the King of Tayar and her longing for her homeland. By gifting her the suit, Garrett intends for Lucina to convey to the King her desire to leave Tayar soon. Additionally, Garrett expresses her pity for Lucina and insists that she accept this gesture of honesty. Tidai can't help but worry about Lucina wearing the black suit concerned that it may create a misunderstanding for Haken, making him think that Lucina blames him for the deaths in Berg. Lucina herself is anxious, fearing that Haken will interpret her attire as a desire to return to Berg. However, their conversation is interrupted by a voice calling out to Lucina. It's Adar, whose identity remains unknown to both Lucina and Titi, as they are both new to the palace. Adar notices Lucina wearing the black suit and assumes she is mourning someone. Lucina clarifies that she is wearing it for the royal party. In return for helping fix the suit, Adar requests food. Meanwhile, Garrett and her servant are informed of Adar's arrival and entry into the palace. Believing that Adar will visit Lucina, Garrett insists on escorting her back and instructs the servants not to inform the king. After satisfying her hunger, Adar begins working on fixing the suit. Lucina and Titi express their concern as they watch Adar cut the fabric. However, Adar reassures them to trust her, promising that she will make Lucina stand out in the suit. Garrett observes them from the partially open door and then departs. Lucina feels a sense of embarrassment as she covers herself with a cloth. Titi tries to remove the cloth, remarking that the suit looks much better now. As the cloth falls away, Lucina's beauty is revealed, and the suit fits her perfectly. The royal party has commenced. Hakan inquires about Lucina from his guard, but suddenly Garrett intervenes, suggesting that Lucina might feel uncomfortable around Hakan, and maybe avoiding him due to her fear. Sensing Hakan's displeasure, Garrett offers to perform a dance for him. Meanwhile, at the entrance, Lucina and Titi are denied entry to the party. The guard informs them that Lucina cannot enter because she is not wearing the suit from the late queen. Titi explains that it is the same suit with a slight modification. Following Garrett's instructions, the guard blocks their entry and forcefully pushes Titi causing both Titi and Lucina to fall to the ground. The guard believes that he doesn't need to treat Lucina kindly, assuming Hakan mistreats her as well. Suddenly, a bird, Puka, flies nearby. Noticing the bird, Lucina hopes for assistance from Puka. While Hakan, with a flushed face from drinking wine, watches Garrett's dance performance in front of him. He reminisces about his childhood with his brother, Raikin, when he idolized Raiken, who was a great knight that unified Tayar's tribes to form a single kingdom and earned the title of the king. Raiken was loved and respected by all, and Hakan admired everything that belonged to Raiken his weapons, his wife, and even the throne. Hakan imagined himself in Raiken's position, possessing everything Raiken had. He believes it is his karma for his ambitious desires as Raiken died protecting him. Even in his dying moments, Raiken expressed his desire to see Garrett. 
After the loss of the king, Hakan was forced to produce an heir, and Tehran suggested Garrett as his mate. However, as Hakan was about to sleep with Garrett, he remembered Rakan's love for Garrett, and told her she didn't have to do it since her love belonged to Rakan. Garrett surprised Hakan by embracing him from behind and confessing her love for Hakan as a man, stating that Rakan was her love as a king. Shocked by her words, Hakan was assured by Garrett that she wanted to become queen again. These memories leave Hakan feeling dizzy. Suddenly, he catches a glimpse of silver hair. It's Lucina, captivating with her stunning appearance, standing before Hakan. Flustered by Lucina's presence, Hakan believes she is an angel descending from the moon, and seeing her causes his dizziness to vanish instantly. Previously, Puka had cleverly distracted the guard, allowing Lucina and Titi to sneak into the party unnoticed. Summoning her bravery and recalling her training with Titi, Lucina approaches Hakan gracefully and greets him. Taken aback, Hakan wonders if the girl before him is truly the same Lucina he once knew. Collecting himself, Hakan remarks that Lucina seems to be late. However, before Lucina can explain, Titi comes to her aid, explaining to Hakan that they encountered a problem earlier. This prompts Hakan to approach Lucina closely, inspecting her arm and noticing a bruise. Concerned, he asks Titi what happened to Lucina, and Titi explains that the guard prevented them from entering due to Lucina not wearing the given attire. Outraged, Hakan demands an explanation, and Titi mentions the late queen, causing Garrett to react with shock. Without hesitation, Garrett slaps the guard, asserting that the suit she gave Lucina is the correct one, and feigns care for Lucina's well-being. Garrett then apologizes to Hakan, clarifying the misunderstanding and offering to handle the guard. However, Hakan insists that Garrett need not intervene and commands Tehran to give him his sword. Approaching the guard, Hakan unsheathes his sword, declaring that the guard had the audacity to harm his wife and disrespect the king of Tyar, tarnishing the kingdom's name. He proclaims that such crimes must be paid for with the guard's life. Witnessing this, Lucina assures Hakan that she is unharmed. As Hakan drapes his cape around Lucina, he assures her that within the castle, nobody can touch her except for him. Drawing Lucina closer, Hakan explains that anyone who disrespects her also disrespects the king, and disloyalty will result in their lives being forfeit. Terrified, the guard kneels and pleads for forgiveness, begging Garrett to intervene. Reluctantly, Garrett asks Hakan if executing the guard during the party is truly necessary. Hakan responds coldly, questioning whether it was Garrett's order to prevent Lucina from attending the party. Taken aback, Garrett realizes that she had mistakenly assumed Hakan had lost interest in Lucina. Now, she contemplates how to adapt to the current circumstances. Maintaining a smile, Garrett claims that she would never do such a thing to Hakan's chosen woman. She accuses the guard of arrogance, asserting that he mistakenly interpreted her orders, and encourages Hakan to proceed with the punishment. Hakan then instructs Lucina to close her eyes and ears, urging her to stay back as he carries out the execution. He orders another guard to dispose of the body in the Valley of Fire. Turning to Lucina, Hakan carries her and proclaims that the party is over, as he intends to take Lucina with him, instructing others not to interfere. As Hakan carries Lucina, who still has her ears covered and eyes closed, he instructs her to open her eyes and ears. Curious, Hakan asks if Lucina was scared, to which she admits she was, but expresses her gratitude for his actions. Flattered, Hakan apologizes to Lucina for raising his voice during their previous encounter. He explains that he had intended to apologize earlier, but didn't know how to express himself, leading to the delay. He also apologizes for not keeping his promise to visit her frequently. In reality, Hakan was apprehensive about visiting Lucina and apologizing because he feared that revealing the possibility of her death after spending the night with him would make her resent him and long to return to Bird. 
He dreaded the thought of losing her forever, causing him to postpone the visit. Suddenly, Lucina interrupts, apologizing for talking foolishly and annoying Hakan. She explains that she wanted to see Hakan and apologize, but her fear of making the same mistake held her back. Gently placing her down, Hakan reassures Lucina that he doesn't want to scare her, and if she feels scared, he will take her back to her palace. He tells her not to worry about making him angry and encourages her to do as she pleases. Hearing this, Lucina grasps Hakan's clothes, expressing her desire to be with him. However, she admits that she's unsure if she's mentally prepared to die for him yet. She eagerly wants to learn everything about Hakan first, as it will help her determine her readiness to make that sacrifice. Lucina's words leave Hakan stunned, but he laughs and gently caresses her face. He agrees with her sentiments, acknowledging the need to truly understand each other before making such commitments. They then proceed to Hakan's room. Once inside, Hakan compliments Lucina's beauty, confessing that his eyes were solely fixed on her when she entered the party. Drawing closer to her ear, he requests that she never wears the suit again, as he dislikes others seeing her in it. Hakan's face draws nearer to hers, and as Hakan gently wraps his arm around Lucina's waist, she flinches, causing Hakan to inquire if his touch bothers her. Lucina quickly clarifies that it's not that she dislikes it, but that she simply wishes to talk with him today. Seeing her response, Hakan laughs and assures her that he understands. He then retrieves glasses and a bottle of Teilhard's wine, pouring it into each glass. Hakan invites Lucina to sit and asks what she would like to know about him. Lucina hesitates, but remains determined, having practiced with Titi. She swiftly drinks the wine and asks Hakan's current age. While pouring another glass for Lucina, Hakan responds that according to human age, he is now 29. Lucina recalls Titi's advice on getting closer to someone by sharing likes and dislikes, so she inquires about Hakan's likes. Hakan playfully teases her, stating that he likes Lucina. Lucina clarifies that she meant his hobbies or preferred food. Finishing her drink once more, Hakan remarks that Lucina must be fond of wine and pours her another glass. As Lucina drinks, she marvels at the delicate taste and different color of Tayar's wine, finding it relaxing. Moving closer to Lucina, Hakan expresses his interest in getting to know her better and suggests playing a game. As Hakan pours the wine into Lucina's glass, he proposes a game where they can choose to answer a question or take a sip of wine if they prefer not to answer. It's Hawkins' turn to ask the first question, and he inquires about the specific type of man Lucina likes whether it's someone intelligent, physically fit, wealthy, or sweet, and romantic. Lucina contemplates his question, realizing that all the qualities she likes are already present in Hakan. However, feeling a bit embarrassed to admit it directly to him, she opts to drink the wine instead of answering. Now it's Lucina's turn, and she poses the same question to Hakan, asking him about the kind of woman he prefers. Hakan responds by saying he admires a woman who isn't afraid of him and loves him for who he truly is, rather than just seeing him as a king. Hakan then declares that it's his turn to ask a question. He wonders if Lucina is genuinely skilled at conversation, or if her quietness stems from being in an unfamiliar environment. Lucina reveals that she has been practicing with Titi to improve her communication skills because she wants to be able to share everything with Hakan without sounding foolish. Hakan commends her determination and affectionately pats her head, expressing his admiration for her efforts to change what she feels she cannot do through practice. He muses that perhaps Lucina was once a brave girl, but became shy and frightened due to past traumas. Reflecting on their past conversation, Hakan suddenly inquires if Lucina was physically abused by her family during her childhood and subsequently ran away from the castle. Lucina finds it difficult to answer, fearing that if she reveals the truth, Hakan might develop contempt for her. Sensing that it is now her turn to ask a question, 
she informs Hakan that his query is invalid, since it's her chance to ask. Hakan chuckles and apologizes for the confusion. Lucina proceeds to ask what Hakan thinks of her. Hakan responds by expressing his fondness for her, stating that the more he gets to know her, the more his affection grows. He assures her that he has no intention of hurting her, emphasizing his desire to make Lucina his queen and spend the rest of his life by her side. Drawing his face closer to hers, Hakan confesses his wish to be with her every night and inquires about Lucina's feelings. After some hesitation, Lucina admits that she is indeed afraid, but doesn't harbor any hatred towards him. She explains that her reservations stem from feeling embarrassed as Hakan possesses such a striking figure, and she worries that he might treat other women the same way. She implores him to only have eyes for her. Flattered by Lucina's words, Hakan blushes and takes hold of her hand. As he draws his face nearer, he kisses her. Holding her in his arms, Hakan asks her to promise that she won't engage in similar actions with other men. While contemplating whether to disclose the truth to Lucina, Hakan ultimately decides to reveal the secret of the Tayar's tribe specifically about the guardian dragon who possesses the most potent fire energy. He explains that women from other tribes cannot withstand this energy, resulting in numerous deaths during pregnancies or childbirth, with some even perishing during intimacy. Initially, Hakan had no intention of sharing this truth, as he planned to eliminate all the people from Berg. However, as his feelings for Lucina grew, he became afraid that if she discovered the truth, she would flee from him. Acknowledging his cowardice in concealing the truth, Hakan apologizes to her, assuring her that he won't harm her and would even return her to Berg if she desires. But as Hakan is about to inquire if she is willing to take the risk and potentially sacrifice herself for him, he realizes that Lucina has been snoring all along. Calling her name, he confirms that she has been fast asleep throughout his revelation. Tenderly placing Lucina on the bed, Hakan covers her with a blanket and kisses her forehead. The following day, Garrett's servants inform her that Lucina and Hakan spent the entire night together in Hakan's bedroom, and it is speculated that they engaged in intimacy, marking the first time a woman has ever stayed overnight in Hakan's room. Upon hearing this news, Garrett expresses her displeasure. As the sun's rays burst into the room, Lucina finds herself in the midst of a dream, where a large apple awaits her bite. Just as she opens her mouth, she abruptly awakens, startled to see Hakan sleeping beside her. A throbbing headache overwhelms her, and she recalls the events of the previous night when she engaged in conversation and shared wine with Hakan. Observing Hakan's peaceful slumber, she cautiously slips out of the bed and makes her way to the door. Outside the room, Titi and Tehran anxiously await, concerned about Lucina's well-being. To their surprise, Lucina emerges from the door, remarking that she feels as if she's on the verge of death. Titi and Tehran rush to her side, eagerly inquiring about her condition. Lucina implores Titi not to shout explaining that her head is pounding with pain. Worried, Titi asks if Lucina is injured, to which Lucina replies that it feels like being stabbed and that she's having difficulty walking. Tehran, unable to believe that Hakan could leave Lucina unable to walk properly, expresses his disbelief. Meanwhile, Titi asks if this has happened multiple times before. Confused by the question, Lucina assumes T.T. is referring to the wine she consumed and admits to having done it three or four times. Upon hearing this, Turan and Titi burst into tears of joy. Relieved that Lucina has survived despite engaging in intimate moments multiple times, still feeling dizzy and unable to speak much, Lucina requests some water. Titi guides Lucina while Turan calls out to T.T., urging her to take care of Lucina as she carries the seed of the Tayar lineage. In his room, Hakan finds himself humming joyfully. Tehran enters, assuming that Hakan has had a delightful night that has left him glowing with happiness. Intrigued by Tehran's remark, Hakan playfully asks if he is handsome, 
recalling Lucina's words from the previous night, when she had complimented his look. Tehran is left speechless, witnessing Hakan's confident assertion that among all the dragons, he possesses the most captivating physique. Seeking clarification, Tehran asks if Lucina had indeed made such comments to Hakan, to which Hakan bashfully nods, confessing that Lucina was simply amazing during their time together. Hakan declares that Lucina was as stunning as the moon goddess herself and as courageous as a valiant knight. Misinterpreting Hakon's words, Turan congratulates him and enthusiastically suggests that they now need to patiently await Lucina's pregnancy. Hakon, caught off guard by Turan's early arrival, curiously questions the reason for his presence. Turan proceeds to deliver the information Hakon had requested, disclosing the existence of two additional women in Berg with striking silver eyes and hair apart from Lucina. Sadly, one of them had succumbed to illness, while the other, an orphan, had been taken to the temple in Brian. Tehran speculates that the latter might be Hakan's savior and have been whisked away due to the revelation of her unique powers. Hakan's mind races as he confirms that Lucina is just similar to the girl who saved him. Tehran goes on to reveal a startling truth. Baroness Berg is not Lucina's biological mother. Although Lucina is indeed Baron Berg's daughter, her birth mother was a renowned prostitute, whose exquisite beauty had captivated King Brian. However, the whereabouts of Lucina's biological mother remain unknown. Turan further explains that Lucina was subjected to harsh treatment from an early age, enduring countless wounds on her face. Astonishingly, it appears that Lucina was treated even worse than a mere servant. Upon hearing the shocking revelation, Hakan's heart fills with sadness, finally understanding why Lucina always appears fearful. Empathizing with her pain, Hakan implores Turan to maintain the utmost secrecy regarding this revelation, emphasizing that he himself will pretend to be unaware of it as well. Although such matters may not hold much significance in Tayar, where the priority lies in Lucina's ability to bear the dragon race, Hakan takes into account Lucina's emotions and fears the disgrace she would face if her background were exposed. He vows to shield her from further suffering and devotes himself to her happiness. Tehran, sensing Hakan's concern, offers an apology for his audacity and raises another pressing matter. The officials are inquiring about the proper burial of the late king, alongside their ancestors in Mezerlik. Additionally, they claim that Adar has insulted the deceased king, and this situation could spell trouble for Adar. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Hakan turns away, but not before Tehran informs him that Lucina is currently at the hot spring. Tehran suggests that Hakan join her there, as it could be a chance for relaxation and a further conversation with Lucina. Blushing with a hint of shyness, Hakan agrees, realizing he still has more to discuss with her. Entering the hot spring, Hakan scans the surroundings, searching for Lucina's presence. Hakan discovers Lucina with Titty, who is gently brushing her hair. Startled by Hakan's presence, Lucina happily greets him. Apologizing for falling asleep abruptly the previous night, Lucina rushes towards Hakan, and he assures her with a smile that it's all right, as he enjoyed watching her peaceful slumber. Noticing Lucina's damp hair, Hakan offers to help her dry it. Titi promptly hands him a towel and informs them that she will wait outside. Hakan takes a seat and invites Lucina to join him. Confused as the only chair is occupied, Lucina hesitates until Hakan kindly offers his lap. Nervously, Lucina sits on Hakan's lap as he dries her hair with the towel. Curious about her well-being after getting drunk the previous night, Hakan inquires, and Lucina explains that she feels better after immersing herself in the hot spring. Tenderly tilting Lucina's chin, Hakan shares his experience with Tayar's wine, noting its sweet taste but also the subsequent morning headache. Drawing her closer to his chest, Hakan compares the wine to Lucina, confessing that even though he saw her all night, the moment she disappeared from his sight. He already missed her, 
making him crave her presence throughout the day. Overwhelmed by Hawkins' words, Lucina impulsively kisses him and confesses her reciprocated feelings. Wondering if Lucina's suffering in Berg led her to easily give her heart to someone who took her to an unfamiliar place, Hawken resolves to make Lucina endure more. He then invites her to his room later that night, as he has something important to share with her. Hawken and Lucina stroll back from the hot spring together. Spotting Titi, Hawken admires Titi's efforts in helping Lucina regain her ability to speak and rewards her with a golden coin as a token of appreciation. Titi is taken aback and expresses her gratitude to Hakan. Hakan then informs Titi that he and Lucina will be having dinner together in his room tonight, hoping to make it a regular occurrence. Tenderly kissing Lucina's hand, Hakan bids her farewell and looks forward to seeing her later. Meanwhile, in the Queen's palace, Garrett's servants relay the news of Hakan inviting Lucina for nightly dinners in his chamber. They also inform Garrett that the officials have decided to bury the late king in Mesalik, indicating that Garrett will be moving out of the palace soon. Pondering the prospect of letting Lucina take over her position without resistance, Garrett surprises her servants by ordering them to summon Gile immediately. A man with long hair bows respectfully before Garrett addressing her as the late queen. Another beautiful man, called as Jile, has been summoned by Garrett for an unknown purpose. Within her palace, Garrett and Gile engage in a crucial deliberation. Compelled to seek Gile's aid, she elucidates the dire circumstances. The priests have determined a date for Raken's body transfer to Meserlik. Igniting uncertainty about her own position in the queen's domain should Raken depart. Gile visibly displays discomfort with the notion. Expanding upon the situation, Garrett unveils the tragic fate that befell Raycon and their children at the hands of the Dragon Slayer. She expresses profound concern that Hakan's potential offspring with Lucina could spell her utter downfall. Resorting to blackmail, she paints a grim picture for Gile, implying the likeness of his sister's descent into a fate akin to the old Adar. Gile hesitates in responding, but ultimately proposes that his sister consider accepting the condition, mindful of their humble origins and the subsequent opulence they have enjoyed since their ascent from poverty to the palace. Enraged by the suggestion, Garrett's fury reaches its peak as she hurls the cup at Gile, venting her anger towards him. The mere thought that her own brother would propose retreat is inconceivable to her. Approaching Gile, Garrett gently touches his chin, evoking memories of their impoverished past and Gile's reliance solely on his physical attractiveness, plagued by illness. She reminds him of her tireless efforts to care for him, even going so far as to purchase books he desired to read, ensuring he had no regrets in life. Asserting that she undertook these actions so he would not perish with remorse, she questions why he refuses to repay her now reminding him of his previous pledge to repay her kindness, recalling his words that he would do anything to assist her. Garrett expresses her belief in Gilly's promises. She credits him for eliminating her competitors, allowing her to ascend to the throne. Gripping Gilly's hair, she demands to know why he has betrayed her at this crucial juncture. Raising her voice, she questions why he no longer supports her as he once did given that his abilities have played a significant role in securing her position. As Gile attempts to explain his reasons, he is plagued by coughs and tremors. <coughs> Concerned by his coughing, Garrett inquires if his heart condition has worsened. Gile reveals that his heart ailment exacerbates each time he utilizes black magic, as it is a side effect of his powers. However, Garrett asserts that his heart was already ailing long before that. Accusing Gile of using his illness as an excuse to avoid meeting her ever since she became queen, she laments that even now, on the brink of losing her position, Gile still employs that justification to evade helping her. She persistently blackmails Gile, recounting the hardships of their shared childhood and insinuating that he prioritizes himself over her. Suppressing his pain, Gile beseeches her to indicate how he can aid her. 
With a smirk adorning her face, Garrett turns to Gillay. In Tarkin's room, a sumptuous feast awaits on the table. Engrossed in his own thoughts, Tarkin practices conversing with himself, contemplating how to approach Lucina, and requests that she bear his child. Frustration engulfs him as his efforts seem in vain. Unexpectedly, Lucina materializes before him, catching him off guard. Her captivating presence leaves Tarkin blushing with delight at her long-awaited arrival. He graciously invites Lucina to take a seat, anxiously inquiring if the food pleases her palate. Seemingly out of nowhere, Lucina embraces Hakan, entwining her arms around his neck and planting a gentle kiss on his lips. After their tender exchange, Lucina confesses that she missed him. Hakan playfully teases her, noting that they had already met earlier in the day, prompting Lucina to clarify that it is now nighttime. Impressed by Lucina's eloquent expression of her feelings, Hakan jests whether she had rehearsed those words as well. With a soft gaze, Hakan reveals that there is something he needs to disclose to her, piquing Lucina's curiosity. However, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the forceful swing of the door as a frantic guard rushes in, informing Hakan of a pressing issue. Catching his breath, the guard relays the news that Adair has once again descended into madness. Startled by this sudden revelation, Hakan and Lucina are taken aback, seeking further details. As the guard explains Adair's disruptive behavior, insisting on retaining Raken's lifeless body, Hakan rises from his seat, prepared to depart. He apologizes to Lucina, explaining that he must leave immediately, assuring her they will continue their conversation later. Left in a state of confusion, Lucina wonders what is happening right now. As Lucina makes her way back to her chamber, a sense of unease overtakes her. Tiddy, following closely behind, attempts to reassure her, noticing a figure passing by nearby. Tiddy speculates if it could be Gillay. This prompts Lucina to halt and inquire about Gillay's identity. Tiddy explains that Gillay is Garrett's younger brother, renowned among the ladies for his extraordinary beauty, surpassing even that of the late queen. Tiddy expresses concern, wondering if something has happened to Gillay. While Gillay, gasping for breath, suddenly succumbs to pain and collapses. Witnessing this shocking sight, both Titi and Lucina are taken aback. Lucina quickly rushes to Gillay's side, realizing that his heart has ceased beating. She realizes the urgent need to heal Gillay, fearing the consequences if her abilities were to be discovered by others. Struggling with her decision, Lucina resolves to assist Gillay. Instructing Titi to seek help, she promises to stay by Gillay's side. Lucina carefully surveys her surroundings, ensuring there is no one nearby. Without delay, she places her hand on Gillay's body, channeling her healing abilities. As Lucina tends to the unconscious Gillay, she observes that his illness has reached an advanced stage, wondering if it will require multiple healing sessions. Throughout the process, Gillet experiences intense sensations, as if his heart is being tightly squeezed, perceiving it as a penance for fulfilling his sister's desires. However, a sudden influx of moonlight engulfs his heart, seemingly washing away his sins. Startled, Gillet opens his eyes in disbelief. Lucina, barely visible to him, inquires if he is awake. Overwhelmed, Gillay wonders if Lucina possesses saintly powers. Gillay sits up, realizes the absence of pain and questions what has transpired as he believed his heart had stopped beating and anticipated his impending demise. Turning to Lucina, he asks if she was the one who healed him. Lucina, taken aback by his inquiry, swiftly devises an explanation, stating that she merely found him unconscious on the ground. Gillet contemplates the severity of his illness, which had proven resistant to various medications, yet Lucina effortlessly cured him, leaving him astounded. Suddenly, Gillet tightly grasps Lucina's hand, urgently questioning if she possesses healing powers. Lucina is rendered speechless, 
her mind racing with concern that her secret ability has been uncovered. Gile assumes that Lucina hails from Brian, a land known for its individuals endowed with holy powers capable of reviving the dead. Clutching Lucina's shoulders, he insists on knowing if she employed such powers on him. Sensing the danger of the situation, Lucina cautiously retreats, freeing herself from Gile's grip. She denies his assumptions, asserting that she merely stayed by his side, waiting for someone else to provide assistance. Expressing genuine worry for his well-being, she dismisses any notion of possessing extraordinary abilities. Gile, however, remains convinced that only the holy powers of Brian's priests could have healed his illness so effortlessly. Puzzled by this revelation, as he was unaware that Hacken's betrothed possessed such powers, Gile begins to suspect that Lucina is concealing her true abilities. He probes further, questioning why she would waste her extraordinary gift, suggesting that she could lead a life of freedom anywhere in the world, far from the constraints of being the dragon's mate. He then implores Lucina to escape with him, extending a helping hand in her endeavor. His thoughts drift toward a wicked desire for a life, devoid of suffering, envisioning it alongside Lucina. He reassures her, urging Lucina to flee with him and promising to assist her in their shared pursuit of liberation. Nevertheless, Lucina resolutely declares her desire to remain by Hakan's side, driven by her determination to become the queen. Unyielding, Gile persists in his efforts, warning Lucina about the peril she would face by carrying a guardian dragon's child. He raises his voice, the excruciating pain that would engulf her entire being, Perplexed, Lucina seeks clarification, urging Gile to explain the meaning behind his words. Pausing briefly, Gile's expression transforms into a sly smirk as he probes Lucina, insinuating that Hacken has been concealing the truth from her all along. In another wing of the palace, Adair brandishes an arrow, threatening to kill anyone who dares to approach Raken's lifeless body. The guards tremble in fear, recognizing the black arrow as the very weapon that claimed the dragon's life, the same arrow that now symbolizes Raycan's demise. Despite her trembling state, Adair adamantly insists that Raycan is merely slumbering, convinced that he will awaken once more. Rushing to his mother's side, Hakan calls out to her, desperately attempting to pacify her escalating emotions. He pleads with Adair to let go of her attachment to Raycan. However, Adair's fury intensifies abruptly, accusing Hakan of being the one responsible for Raken's death. Hakan is stunned, devastated to hear such accusations from his own mother. As he sinks into despair, the other guards frantically attempt to reason with Adair, reminding her that Raken fell victim to the Dragon Slayer's attack. Yet, still consumed by rage, Adair lunges closer proclaiming that it was Hakan's actions that led to Raycan's demise and expressing her desire for him to perish as well. As Lucina's mind races with doubts about Hakan's honesty, Gile provides further explanation. He reveals that women who become mates to guardian dragons experience excruciating pain and often meet a tragic end, with only a fortunate few surviving by sheer luck. When these women become pregnant, the majority of them suffer from deadly agony that ultimately claims their lives. Gile also speculates that Hakan brought Lucina, a woman from Brian, as his bride to prevent causing harm and death among his own people in Tayar. Accusing Hakan of concealing the truth, Gile suggests that Hakan's intentions were to avoid complicating the situation. Lucina's disappointment deepens upon hearing these revelations from Gile who reassures her that she should not misinterpret Hakan's intentions and actions towards her. The situation escalates as Adar plunges the black arrow into Hakan's chest, intensifying the tension. Alongside the guards restraining Adair to prevent further harm, one of them calls for a priest to prepare holy water for Hakan, expressing concern for his well-being. Despite the pain he endures, Hakan remains stunned by his mother's actions as she continues to demand his death. Reflecting on his childhood, 
Hawken recalls a time when Adair, his mother, urged him to emulate his brother Reagan, believing it would bring her solace. Adair affectionately patted Hawken's head, but when Reagan confidently declared that Hawken could replace him in battle, Adair admonished him for speaking such words to a child. Adair conveyed that Reagan and Hawken were not the same, emphasizing Reagan's role as the great king who unified Tayar. The young Hawken heard those words and experienced a mixture of sadness. In the present, the priest tends to Hakan's wound, reassured that it is not severe. Hakan then rises to his feet and departs, requesting to be alone and instructing that no one follow him. Meanwhile, tears stream down Lucina's face as she contemplates the words spoken by Gile. With a determined effort, she wipes away her tears and gathers her courage, resolving to confront Hakan directly. However, Gile remains skeptical, doubting that Hakan will reveal the truth considering he was the one who took Lucina away from Brian. Undeterred, Lucina firmly asserts that she cannot place her trust in Gile, someone she has only met once, and there is a possibility that he is attempting to deceive her. With that, she turns away from Gile and walks away, leaving him behind. As Hakan walks alone towards his chamber, he suddenly pauses upon hearing Lucina call out his name. Lucina, gasping for breath, informs Hakan that she has something to ask him. However, her attention is quickly drawn to the scar on Hakan's chest, and she expresses her concern for his well-being. Avoiding eye contact, Hakan turns his face away and informs Lucina that he is not in a state to talk at the moment. Tenderly, he places his hand on Lucina's shoulder and advises her to leave and save their conversation for later. Refusing to back down, Lucina firmly grasps Hakan's arm and urges him to wait, insisting on tending to his wound. But as her hand approaches Hakan's injury, he intercepts it, firmly telling Lucina to stop. He states with determination that he doesn't wish to speak right now. However, Lucina remains resolute, unwilling to let him go. Unable to contain his emotions any longer, Hakan commands Lucina to leave. Startled and rendered speechless, Lucina watches as Hakan walks away, leaving her behind. Feeling a sense of sadness and disappointment, Lucina sits outside, seeking solace with Titi by her side. Titi attempts to reassure Lucina, advising her not to worry excessively about Hakan. However, Lucina expresses her desire to be alone and requests that Titi leave her be. Titi feels a pang of sadness, but assures Lucina that she can be called upon any time if needed. Left alone, Lucina contemplates the jumble of thoughts swirling within her mind. Suddenly, she hears someone inquire if she has considered their suggestion. It's Gile, ascending the stairs and approaching Lucina. Judging by her expression, Gile assumes that Lucina and Hakan haven't had a proper conversation. Gile takes a seat beside Lucina and questions why she has concealed her ability until now. However, Lucina keeps her face hidden, persistently denying possessing such abilities. Letting out a sigh, Gile surmises that Lucina hides her power out of fear that people like him, burdened by pain, would seek her out and disturb her. Accusing Lucina of not recognizing the magnitude of her own power, Gile reveals that her ability would spare her from the perils of bearing Hakan's child. Hearing Hakan's name mentioned without honorifics by Gile, Lucina displays her displeasure. This prompts Gile to question whether Lucina is still in love with a man who has lied to her and used her. Lucina asserts that she remains uncertain about her feelings. Gile probes further asking what made Lucina fall in love with Hakan, to which Lucina becomes even more disenchanted by the line of questioning. Nonetheless, she responds by mentioning Hakan's attentiveness to her story from the beginning to the end, his trust in her, and his compliments on her beauty. Underestimating the depth of her emotions, Gile asserts that he can also do the things Hakan did for her. Drawing closer to Lucina, he claims that it's not difficult to replicate, and that he would be willing to do those things for her if that's what she desires. Blushing, Gile praises Lucina, calling her beautiful and adorable. 
He shares that the first time he laid eyes on her, he thought she was a goddess who had come to save him. Extending his hand, Jile declares his intention to protect her and proposes an escape together. Inside his chamber, Hakan seeks solace by consuming the Tayar's wine. The servant is on the verge of informing him about Garrett, but before she can finish, Hakan erupts in anger, commanding her to prevent anyone from entering. Unexpectedly, Turin materializes, inquiring if he may enter the room. Composing himself, Hakan inquires about Turan's intentions. Turin reveals that he learned from the priest that Hakan abandoned the treatment prematurely and is now drinking despite the unhealed wound. However, Hakan appears irritated, asserting that a mere scratch wouldn't kill a dragon. In response, Turin alters his expression, expressing concern and emphasizing that the Black Arrow could prove far more detrimental if left untreated, capable of slaying even a guardian dragon. Raising his voice, Hakan demands to know what he should do, insinuating that Turan desires Hakan to incarcerate his own mother. Surprisingly, Turan agrees and proposes an alternative to imprisonment, suggesting that Adair be banished to the Valley of Fire. He cites Adair's previous proclamation of killing the last guardian dragon, which implies she desires Hakan's demise. Turan further divulges that he received news of Adair's impending exile to the Valley of Fire. Avoiding eye contact, he explains that Adair has spent a whole decade insulting the late king's body and recently threatened the current king's life, prompting the elders to take action. Enraged, Hakan hurls the bottle, shattering it into fragments. Fuming, he proclaims that Adair is his mother and dismisses Turan's words as nonsensical. Turan maintains a calm tone, emphasizing that Adair can no longer fulfill her duties as the king's mother, expressing his remorse. He implores Hakan not to shield Adar any longer and to make a rational decision. In response, Hakan's sword finds its way to Turan's face, poised menacingly. Unsheathing the blade, Hakan commands Turan to depart or face certain death. Turan swiftly bows, signaling his intention to leave Hakan undisturbed. The news further fuels Hakan's fury, blending sorrow and rage over his mother's plight. He unleashes his anger upon nearby objects, causing them to shatter and scatter in disarray. Suddenly, his chest wound reacts, but Hakan disregards it, consumed by profound sadness. He ponders how his mother would find solace if it were him, not his brother who perished at the hands of the Dragon Slayer. Tears stream down his face as the pain becomes unbearable, and Hakan collapses onto the ground, unable to contain his anguish any longer. In the meantime, Gile attempts to persuade Lucina to escape from that place with him, but he receives no response except for Lucina's bewildered expression. She finds it peculiar that despite hearing compliments from Gile, they fail to elicit any emotional reaction or happiness within her. However, when she hears similar words from Hakan, it seems to ignite a passionate response in her. Suddenly, Lucina rises abruptly and informs Gile that she intends to visit Hakan. Despite Gile's negative remarks about Hakan, stating that he is no better for not telling her the truth, Lucina averts her gaze and expresses concern for Hakan's well-being acknowledging the pain he must be experiencing. Without hesitation, she leaves Gile behind. In Ader's chamber, Ader remains consumed by rage, seemingly having lost her sanity. She continues to shout, accusing Hakan of killing Raken, claiming she witnessed it herself when Hakan released an arrow towards Raken. However, her aggression subsides as she notices her cherished doll falling to the ground. It appears that Adair regains her composure, her expression softening as she gazes at the fallen doll. She realizes that her previous accusations were unfounded, as she firmly believes that Hakan would never harm Raken. Clutching the doll in her arms, Adair comprehends that Hakan had been doing everything in his power to assist his brother in the war and that Raken sacrificed his life to protect Hakan, fulfilling his promise to Adar. Memories of the past flood Adar's mind, 
recalling when Raken playfully teased her, stating that she couldn't bear to see Hakan suffer even a little, but she could endure the pain if it was Raken who got hurt. Ader explained at that time that as the king, Raken had a duty to safeguard Tyre, so she could endure the tears. However, if anything unfortunate were to befall her beloved Hakan, she couldn't even fathom it. In response, Raken offered his mother reassuring smiles, pledging to protect Hakan with unwavering dedication. He also assured her that their cherished Hakan would live a life of freedom, liberated from the burdens of kingship. Now, firmly grounded in the present, Adair has fully regained her senses, acknowledging the unjust actions she directed towards Hakan in her state of mindlessness. Expressing her profound regret, she shouts that her previous behavior was a result of her temporary insanity and declares her desire to apologize to Hak Khan. She pleads with the guards stationed outside her door to grant her permission to meet Hakan. However, the guards remain unresponsive, not even flinching at her plea. Amidst the remnants of the black magic ritual, Garrett praises Gile for his accomplishments. Garrett takes delight in receiving the news of Adair's descent into madness and her subsequent attack on Hakan. Meanwhile, Gile busies himself with tidying up his book of black magic rituals. Recognizing Hakan's long-standing vulnerability when it comes to his mother, Garrett believes that this turmoil will deter Hakan from moving Raken's body to Meserlike. With a hint of hesitation, Gile shares the news he heard about Adar potentially being sent to the Valley of Fire, expressing his concern that such a fate would surely lead to her demise. However, having witnessed many individuals lose their sanity and depart from the palace due to Gile's black magic, Garrett questions why he would be bothered by yet another impending death. With her malicious thoughts at work, Garrett contemplates that even in the midst of this significant incident, Hakan would not send his mother to jail, but rather return her to her rightful place. She begins to devise her own schemes, foreseeing personal benefits arising from the situation. As Hakan teeters on the edge of death, he experiences vivid hallucinations of the moment he was wounded by the Dragon Slayer. Helpless and unable to move, he longed for assistance until suddenly, the young Lucina appeared. In the present, Lucina finds herself inside Hakan's room and discovers him lying on the ground. Gently caressing his head, she senses the intense heat emanating from his body. Lucina's expression turns sorrowful as she contemplates whether she can trust Hakan and stand by his side. Though still uncertain, she feels a pang of sadness in her heart upon witnessing Hakan's suffering. Memories of encountering the wounded dragon resurface, evoking a profound understanding of the pain he must be enduring. Determined, Lucina employs her healing abilities to mend Hakan's wounds, driven by her desire to alleviate his pain. Suddenly, Hakan awakens, finding himself alone in the room. He takes a moment to collect his thoughts, feeling a lingering sensation as if he had been immersed in a vivid dream. The recollection of his previous injury feels strikingly real. Astounded, he examines his fully healed wound, consumed by wonder and questioning how such a miraculous recovery could have occurred. Turan and the priest are en route to check on Hakan. To their astonishment, they encounter Hakan halfway, appearing completely fine despite being badly injured the previous day. Turan inquires about Hakan's well-being, intentionally bringing the priest along to assess Hakan's condition initially. However, upon seeing Hakan fully recovered, Turan is overjoyed. Unexpectedly, Hakan questions the priest if he visited his chamber to heal him the previous night. The priest denies having visited Hakan since their last encounter in the Holy Cave, leaving Hakan perplexed. Seeking clarification, Hakan turns to Turan and asks if he used the holy water to tend to his wound. Turan expresses further confusion, stating that he did not engage in such an act. As Hakan tries to make sense of the situation, he wonders how his wound from the black arrow could heal in just half a day, especially considering it had worsened due to his berserk behavior. Nevertheless, 
Tehran interrupts Hakan's contemplation, relieved that the wound wasn't as deep as they initially thought. The priest adds that Hakan's role as a guardian dragon might have expedited the healing process. Hakan directs his attention to his guard and inquires if anyone visited his chamber the previous night. The guard informs Hakan that Lucina had paid him a visit, expressing her desire to observe Hakan while he slept. Shocked by this revelation, Hakan realizes that the events of last night were not a dream. He then asks the guard where Lucina is. Meanwhile, outside Adar's chamber, the guards exchange concerned glances, wondering why it's unusually silent inside. They speculate that something might have happened to Adar, considering she had been sobbing throughout the entire night. Concerned for her well-being, they make the decision to investigate the room. However, much to their astonishment, they discover an empty chamber with the window wide open before them. Their anger builds up, realizing that Adar has fled. In Lucina's chamber, Titi becomes concerned as she observes Lucina's gloomy demeanor. Attempting to uplift her spirits, Titi presents her with a book detailing the history of Tayar and its dragons. Handing the book to Lucina, Titi suggests that it would be beneficial for Lucina to familiarize herself with the subject, considering her future role as the Queen of Tayar. However, Lucina's primary focus is to ascertain the veracity of Gile's words. As she flips through the pages, Lucina grows perplexed, realizing that the book contains only written text without any illustrations. Lucina explains that she is unable to read the words, as her stepmother, Baroness Berg, never taught her literacy skills. Lucina's ability to speak is solely a result of her own diligent self-learning. Turning to Titi, Lucina inquires if she can read and requests Titi to read the book aloud for her. Observing the script in the book, Tita explains that Tayar possesses various types of writing systems, and the book employs an ancient dragon script that even Titi cannot decipher. Suddenly, out of nowhere, they hear a voice calling out for Hoki, which is Hakan's nickname given by Adar. As the door swings open, Adar enters Lucina's chamber, surprising both Lucina and Tidy. Concerned about Adar's appearance, Lucina and Titi approach her, inquiring about her well-being. Clutching the doll tightly, Adar appears bewildered and mentions that she is searching for Hoki. Unaware of Adar's true identity, Lucina and Titi inquire if she is referring to her son. Noticing the book that Titi had placed on the nearby table, Adar suddenly grabs it, proudly declaring that she is the author of the book. Lucina seeks confirmation that Adar indeed wrote the book, to which Adar confidently affirms. She reveals that she wrote it to read to her sons. Lucina feels a sense of relief, having found someone who can read and write in the ancient dragon language. Adar then takes a pen and begins writing in the book, informing Lucina that she will teach her. While making his way to Lucina's chamber, Hakan walks with a confused expression, lost in deep contemplation. He ponders the possibility of Lucina being the same little girl who healed him ten years ago. However, he wonders why Lucina never used her healing power to cure her own skin rash, if she truly possesses such abilities. Nevertheless, his mind continues to race considering the possibility that Lucina may be hiding her powers from others. Arriving in front of Lucina's chamber door, Hakan still questions whether Lucina is truly the young girl who saved him. To his astonishment, he hears Adar's voice emanating from inside the chamber. Observing Adar teaching Lucina the ancient dragon script with the same care she would teach her own children, Lucina attentively absorbs every detail. Hakan watches from a distance, witnessing Adair's radiant smile, which stirs up a mix of emotions within his heart. It has been ten long years since he last saw Adar's smile so warmly. Lucina informs Adar that her name is Lucina, not Hoki, as she had previously referred to herself as Hoki. Adar appears confused, prompting Lucina to remind her that she was initially searching for her son, Hoki. This revelation leaves Adir looking perplexed, as if she has forgotten everything that transpired earlier. 
Suddenly, they are startled by the sound of Hawkins' voice inquiring about their activities. Surprised by Hawkins' unexpected presence, Lucina calls out to him from her location. Hakan wonders why Adair is here instead of being in her own room. Adar remains silent, gazing at Hakan. Lucina rises to her feet and explains to Hakan that she was learning how to read and write with Adi. Lucina knows Adar as Adi. Upon hearing Lucina refer to Adar as Ati, Hakan becomes puzzled. Lucina then clarifies that Adi was the one who had helped her in the past, asking Hakan if he knows Adi. Observing Hawkins' formal language and respectful demeanor towards Addy, Lucina wonders if Addy holds a high position. As Lucina and Hakan converse, Adar continues to appear perplexed. Suddenly, it dawns on her that the person before her is Hakan. Adar calls out to Hakan, tears welling up in her eyes as she remembers that she was indeed searching for Hakan. Adar regains her composure tears streaming down her face as she expresses deep regret for her previous actions. Witnessing this scene from her vantage point, Lucina is filled with confusion. Within the confines of the Queen's Palace, Garrett descends the stairs leading to a hidden chamber, deep in contemplation over the report relayed by her servant. The servant diligently followed Garrett's instructions ensuring the window in Adair's quarters remained open, allowing Adar to escape. Additionally, the servant witnessed Adar making her way towards Lucina's palace, and later observed King Hakan also heading in that direction. Seeking guidance from Garrett, the servant inquires about the next course of action. Upon entering the room, Garrett directs her attention to Gile, posing the question of his readiness. Gile, seated on the ground amidst the preparations for the black magic ritual, trembles hesitantly but confirms that he is ready. Despite his trepidation concerning his sister, Gile attempts to express his opinion to Garrett. He voices his concern that Adar has already lost her sanity, warning that subjecting her to further black magic will permanently sever her ties to reality. However, Garrett forcefully nudges Gile's head, firmly stating that Adar opposes her union with Hakan and has made attempts to oust her from the Queen's palace. Garrett insists that Adar must never regain her sanity, threatening that failure to comply will result in her demise. After being forcefully pushed by Garrett, Gile stumbles and falls to the ground. Under the weight of Garrett's threats, Gile reluctantly begins casting the black magic spell carefully pouring the liquid into the water-filled plate that he had prepared. As the liquid settles, the reflection on the water surface reveals Adar, Hakan, and Lucina. Suddenly, a vision floods Adar's mind, depicting Lucina aiming a black arrow at a young Hakan. Consumed by rage, Adair raises her hand, clutching the pen tightly, and launches an attack on the speechless Lucina. Witnessing the escalating situation before him, Hakan swiftly intervenes, restraining Adar and prying the pen from her grasp, tossing it aside. However, as Hakan turns his attention to Lucina, he is struck with shock when he sees her covering one of her eyes in disbelief. Opening her hand, a scar etches across her face. Hakan seethes with anger, witnessing the harm inflicted upon his beloved. Meanwhile, Adar, still lost in her deranged state, shouts accusations, blaming Lucina for the deaths of her son and expressing her twisted desire to kill her. Hakan, rendered speechless, holds the trembling Lucina tightly in his arms, his heart shattered by Adar's actions. He calls out for the guards, urgently requesting their assistance, while cradling Lucina protectively. Devastated by Adar's actions, Hakan believes that now Adar also seeks to harm his beloved. He reconciles with the fact that if Adar vented her anger on him, he could bear it, as he already carries guilt for his brother's death. As the guards restrain Adar, tears streaming down Hakan's face, he commands them to take her to the Valley of Fire. With unwavering resolve, he declares that anyone who harms the king or his spouse will face severe punishment. The guards obediently escort the weakened Adar away, her strength depleted. 
Continuing to cradle Lucina in his arms, Hakan instructs Titi to summon the priest. Avoiding direct eye contact, Hakan feels a profound sense of guilt that Lucina has been hurt, blaming himself for not properly dealing with the criminal. Hakan promises that such an incident will never happen again. In the armory, Turan enters expressing disbelief as he confirms with Hakan if Adar is truly going to be sent to the Valley of Fire. Turan's expression reveals his shock. Hakan, with a stoic expression, states that the elders should find solace in knowing that the one who threatened the last guardian dragon will soon be eradicated. Before Turan can argue further, Hakan forcefully slices through a straw man, declaring that anyone who attempts to harm the king and his spouse will be cast into the Valley of Fire, emphasizing that this is how Tyre's law functions. Turan continues to try and change Hakan's mind, raising concerns about the potential guilt Lucina may feel if she discovers that the king's mother is being punished because of her. Hakan firmly asserts that no one within the palace should utter a word about it. He proclaims that everything regarding Adair will be erased from their discussions, forbidding any mention of her, and warns that severe punishments await those who violate this decree. Meanwhile, in another part of the palace, Jillay walks alone, occasionally coughing, questioning if he had lost consciousness after employing black magic. Noticing the presence of servants nearby, Gillet inquires if anything significant occurred while he was absent. The servant hesitates, citing the king's orders not to discuss the matter. Perplexed, Gillet presses for clarification regarding the prohibition on discussion. However, the servants quickly flee, seeking permission to leave. Observing their hurried retreat, Gilai wonders what is happening and speculates if Hakan has been harmed once again. Suddenly, Lucina emerges and grasps Gilai's clothing, leaving him taken aback. With resolute eyes, Lucina declares that she has something to ask him. Lucina directly confronts Gilai, seeking his knowledge about the woman whom Hakan intends to send to the Valley of Fire. Having previously inquired with Titi, who was also unaware of the details. Lucina believes Gillet might have the information she seeks. However, still plagued by coughs, Gillet asks for clarification regarding what she means by the Valley of Fire. Suddenly, a shocking realization grips him, causing Gillet to urgently grasp Lucina's shoulder, desperately seeking confirmation if Hakan intends to send Adar to the Valley of Fire. Lucina, now confused, questions who Adar is. She explains that Hakan issued an order to send someone named Addy to the Valley of Fire, prompting Lucina to inquire about Addy's true identity. Taken aback by the revelation, Gile struggles to comprehend the gravity of the situation, finding it hard to believe that, because of his actions, Hakan would condemn Adar to a death sentence. Witnessing Gile's speechless state, Lucina insists on learning the truth even though she understands that Hakan has forbidden any discussion of the matter within the palace. Trembling, Gillet stammers, attempting to provide an answer to Lucina's question. However, before he can complete his response, someone calls out for Lucina. It is Hakan, and his expression is filled with fury upon seeing his beloved in the presence of another man. Both Lucina and Gillet are taken aback by Hakan's sudden appearance. With an intense glare, Hakan demands to know what Gillet is doing with his spouse. Panicking, Gillet quickly withdraws his hand from Lucina's shoulder, desperately trying to explain himself. However, Hakan moves swiftly, walking faster than Gillet's words can catch up. Without hesitation, Hakan seizes Gillet by the collar, expressing his outrage at Gillet daring to touch his spouse's body and threatening him with death. Sensing the need to prevent further misunderstandings, Lucina interjects, stating that it is not what it appears to be, and that Hakan has misunderstood the situation. However, Hakan, still seething with anger, demands to know what nonsense Gile has been telling Lucina. Stepping in, Lucina intervenes, raising her voice and urging Hakan to listen to her. Gile coughs once Hakan releases his grip on his collar, Lucina then turns her gaze to Gillet, 
instructing him to leave as she needs to have a private conversation with Hakan. Jile bows respectfully, requesting permission to depart. Once Gile departs, leaving them alone, Lucina summons her courage and directly questions Hakan about the nonsense he had asked Gile earlier, regarding the possibility of death for sleeping with the guardian dragon. Hakan's expression reveals his shock at her words. Lucina continues, questioning him about the reason he took her away, implying that it was to replace a woman from Tayar. Trembling, Lucina expresses her disappointment that Hawken chose to keep this information hidden from her. She asks him if he concealed the truth in order to prevent her from running away once she discovered it. Hawken hesitates in his response, explaining that he never intended to hide the truth from her, and that he had wanted to tell her for a long time. However, unable to contain her tears any longer, Lucina turns away from Hakan. Despite his attempts to reach out to her, she evades his touch and declares that she doesn't want to talk to him at the moment. With tears streaming down her face, Lucina departs, leaving Hakan to confront his own profound regret etched across his features. Throughout his life, Hakan has grown accustomed to women fleeing from him, paying no heed to their pursuit, until ultimately they resign themselves to giving up on him. However, he finds himself questioning why he feels such profound pain when Lucina rejects him. He acknowledges that Lucina is the first person to offer him a genuine smile, someone who has become incredibly close to him. She resembles the very dream he had held on to since childhood, rekindling his hope in life. In that moment, Hawken comes to a realization he is falling in love with Lucina. While strolling alone, seeking solace for her pain, Lucina is suddenly greeted by a whisper. Jile emerges from behind a pillar, signaling Lucina to remain silent. Approaching him cautiously, Lucina inquires about Gile's well-being. Playfully, Gile teases her, suggesting that she could heal him, but he quickly reassures her that he is only joking fearing that Hakan would swiftly put an end to his life if he witnessed such an act. Regaining his seriousness, Gilei informs Lucina that their primary concern should be saving Adair. Lucina is taken aback upon learning from Gilei that Adar is Hakan's mother and is destined for the Valley of Fire. Gilei further explains that due to Adar being the mother of the Guardian Dragon, they cannot cast her into the flames but rather imprison her there. Considering Adar's old age and weakened state, it is unlikely she will survive for long in such conditions. Lucina queries how they can assist Adar, prompting Gile to reveal that he knows a way to access the location. Urging Lucina, he convinces her that if she lends her aid, they can rescue Adair together. In Lucina's palace, Puka, taking the form of a bird, is astounded to hear Lucina's desire to enter the Valley of Fire. Shifting into an elf, Puka expresses disbelief, remarking that Lucina must have lost her senses. However, Lucina maintains her unwavering belief in herself, expressing gratitude for Puka's presence in that moment. Locking eyes with determination, she earnestly asks for Puka's assistance. Standing before the front gate of the Valley of Fire, Guards keep a watchful eye on its entrance. Lucina, concealed behind the bushes alongside Puka, searches for a way to infiltrate the Forbidden Realm. Clutching the key provided by Gile, which unlocks Adara's prison door, Lucina patiently awaits the opportune moment to make her move. Earlier, Gile had explained his plan to incapacitate the guards, using his magic while confined to his chamber. Undeterred by the risks, Lucina summoned her courage to venture into the treacherous depths of the Valley of Fire. However, Puka, consumed by worry, expresses concern for Lucina's decision to expose herself to immense danger. Lucina explains that she cannot bear the thought of Adar perishing. Despite Puka's persistent pleas for her to retreat, Lucina's unwavering determination shines through as she clarifies that her motivations extend beyond saving Adar alone. Perplexed, 
Puka inquires about the true reason behind Lucina's resolute actions. Lucina remains silent, her thoughts consumed by the memory of Hakan's pained expression when he passed judgment on Adar. While still disappointed in Hakan for concealing the truth about her role as the dragon's bride, Lucina is driven by a deeper purpose. Enticing Puka with a pouch brimming with nuts, Lucina proposes a deal. If Puka aids her, he can enjoy these delectable treats every day. Unable to resist the temptation, Puka eagerly accepts the pouch, insisting that Lucina keeps her promise. With an awareness of the timing, Lucina knows that Gile will cast a sleeping spell on the guards at this specific moment. As the spell takes effect, the guards suddenly succumb to slumber, providing Lucina with the perfect opportunity to stealthily enter through the gate. Accompanied by Puka, who has transformed into a bird, Lucina ascends the stairs, determined to locate Adar's place of imprisonment. As she surveys the array of cage-like prisons, Lucina quickens her pace. The heat from the Valley of Fire causes beads of sweat to trickle down her face. Suddenly, Puka uses his feet to tug at Lucina's hair, attempting to convey a warning. It becomes apparent that a towering guardian of the Valley of Fire is present, fast asleep, clutching a bat. Realizing the urgency, Lucina instructs Puka to hasten their progress before the guardian awakens. Stealthily maneuvering past the slumbering giant guard, Lucina meticulously searches for Adar's prison. When she finally locates it, she dashes towards Adar's confinement, driven by the desire to set her free. The prison is designed like a cage, meant for one person, and there sits Adar, utterly defenseless, tightly embracing her doll. Without wasting another moment, Lucina promptly unlocks the prison door using the key Gilai had entrusted to her, freeing Adar from her confines, aided by Puka. Placing her hand on Adar's forehead, Lucina assesses her condition, noting that Adar has fainted and is battling a high fever. Moving swiftly, Lucina carries Adar on her back, with Puka lending support in pulling Adar along. Once they have distanced themselves from the scorching heat of the valley, and the air becomes less oppressive than within the prison, Lucina gently places Adar down and endeavors to awaken her. Turning to Puka, Lucina requests his assistance in giving Adar the water she had brought, as she intends to utilize her healing powers to help Adar recover. As previously explained by Gile, Adar's punishment entailed being confined in the Valley of Fire for a single day. If Adar could survive, she would emerge from the ordeal alive. With Lucina's healing powers, Gile held firm belief in Adar's ability to endure. Lucina begins casting her restorative magic on Adar, wondering why she has not yet awakened. However, their focus is abruptly interrupted when Puka reacts to the thunderous roar of the enormous guard approaching from behind. Lucina turns to find the giant guard standing there, seething with anger. Recalling Gile's earlier warning, Lucina remembers that the guard awakening signifies Gile's loss of consciousness. During that time, Gile had also provided her with a pouch of salt to be thrown into the guard's eyes as a last resort. Consumed by fury, the giant guard launches an attack on Lucina, but just in the nick of time, Puka employs his magic casting a spell to release the restraining woodbine that had bound the giant guard. While Lucina frantically tries to retrieve the pouch of salt from her pocket, her exhaustion becomes overwhelming, leaving her feeling dizzy and disoriented. Regrettably, the giant guard manages to break free from the woodbine, striking Lucina and Puka with a forceful blow, causing the salt to scatter before they could employ it. Trembling and still reeling from the depletion of her powers, Lucina feels utterly helpless as she watches the giant guard's hand approach, poised to capture her. However, as she opens her eyes, she witnesses Hakan stepping in, intercepting the guard's attack with his bare hand. A look of fierce determination fills Hakan's face as he retaliates, leaving Lucina relieved but perplexed as to why Hakan has appeared in this perilous moment. Hakan arrives just in the nick of time, and with his commanding authority, 
he directs the massive guard to return to its post. Complying with his master's instruction, the guard pivots and descends the staircase. Shifting his attention to Lucina, Hakan's expression evolves from anger to a mixture of concern and worry. He demands an explanation from Lucina about her presence there, underlining the audacity of her risking her life to aid a criminal. Despite struggling to discern Hakan clearly due to her condition, Lucina attempts to convey that Adair's demise would result in irreversible consequences, burdening Hakan with profound remorse. Regrettably, she is unable to conclude her explanation, her strength giving way, causing her to collapse. However, Hakan reacts swiftly, managing to catch her before she hits the ground. All of a sudden, Adar's awareness sharpens, and she perceives Hakan as Lakan, expressing her immense relief that Lakan has finally arrived. Approaching Hakan, Adar reaches out and touches his arm remarking that she has been anticipating his arrival, mistaking Hakan for Lakin. She then presents him with the doll she called Hoki. Adar urges Hakan to take Hoki and swiftly depart the location. Despite his bewilderment, Adair's urgency compels Hakan to act. She presses Hoki into his hands, stressing the increasing heat and danger within the Valley of Fire. Adder references Lakin's vow to always protect Hoki as a priority. At the sight of the doll in his grasp, a flood of memories rushes over Hakan. He reminisces about his youth when Adar personally crafted the doll for him, and they named it Hoki. During that time, young Hakan was brimming with joy, tightly embraced by Adar, who affectionately shared that Hoki was his nickname, even before his birth. Hakan trembles, his emotions entwined in a complex web. Adar, however, persists, urging him to depart swiftly, reassuring him that she can manage on her own. This way, he can lead Hoki and Lucina out of the perilous situation. She emphasizes that any harm befalling Hoki would render her incapable of carrying on. A plea for Hakan to safeguard his younger brother at any cost. Gazing at the Hoki doll in his grasp, Hakan acknowledges the fulfillment of the promise Lakin had made, and his tears begin to flow uncontrollably. Gradually regaining her composure, Adar recognizes that the person before her is indeed Hakan. Her words stumble out in an apology, confessing that her mind had become unhinged preventing her from recognizing even her own son. Observing this poignant moment from a distance, Puka's anxiety gives way to relief, knowing that everyone is now safe. Meanwhile, within the Queen's palace, Garrett appears visibly displeased upon learning that Adar has been freed from the Valley of Fire. A servant relays the information that once Adair has made a complete recovery, she will take up residence in the Queen's Palace. This news serves to further exacerbate Garrett's distress. As Lucina remains resting on her bed, Hakan remains steadfastly by her side, expressing gratitude for her actions that have shielded him from the depths of regret. The mere thought of Adar's potential demise due to his actions weighs heavily on Hakan's mind. He earnestly implores Lucina not to endanger her own life again, revealing that living without her would be akin to enduring a living hell. However, Lucina counters that she cannot heed that request. Despite her inner turmoil towards Hakan, she finds the sight of him suffering to be more agonizing. She boldly asserts her willingness to do anything, even if it entails sacrificing herself in order to safeguard Hakan. With conviction, she announces her intention to bear Hakan's child as a testament to her commitment. Hakan is taken aback by the suddenness of Lucina's declaration. Lucina then openly expressed her profound love for Hakan to the extent that she would willingly lay down her life for him. 
It was this very conviction that fortified her decision. Acting without a moment's doubt, she draws closer to Hacken and places a kiss on his lips. This action leaves him stunned, as Lucina persists in her embrace, prompting Hakan to suddenly attempt to halt her. He questions whether she genuinely comprehends the gravity of her declaration. In response, Lucina asserts her complete understanding of the matter, noting that the risk of maternal mortality during childbirth is a common concern. Given her healing abilities, she believes herself to be better equipped for the challenge compared to other women. With audacious resolve, she pushes Haken onto the bed, rendering him momentarily speechless. Seating herself atop Hakan, Lucina's touch is gentle and affectionate. However, a change comes over Hakan, and he interrupts her advances. He rises and holds Lucina's arms, expressing that this is not a decision to rush into impulsively. He conveys that while Lucina might be prepared to confront the prospect of death, he is utterly unprepared to lose her. Even recalling the moment he found her in the Valley of Fire, the mere thought of her absence drives him to the brink of despair. Holding Lucina close, he implores her to prioritize her health and safety. His embrace an earnest plea. In the moment, Lucina contemplates whether to reveal her ability to Hakan, given that Gile is already privy to it. Despite her efforts to empathize with Hakan's concerns, she reiterates the necessity of a descendant from the Guardian Dragon's lineage. She also expresses her reluctance to have another woman bear Hakan's child. In response, Hakan proposes that Lucina undergo a comprehensive health assessment to ensure her well-being. He expresses concern due to her fainting episode the previous day and his reluctance to risk losing her again. Reflecting on this, Lucina finds herself wondering about her own condition. Despite possessing healing abilities, she recognizes her lack of knowledge about her own physical state. Given her recent experience of fainting after employing her powers to heal Adar, she considers the possibility that her body might not be as robust as she presumed. Upon considering this, Hakan summons the priest to examine Lucina's condition. The priest's assessment concludes that Lucina's weakness stems from inadequate nutrition and speculates that her childhood eating habits might have contributed. Lucina's concern becomes palpable, prompting Hakan to firmly grasp her shoulder and query whether an improvement in her eating habits could alleviate her condition. The priest, however, explains that he must analyze Lucina's energy to provide an accurate response. This analysis is necessary due to disparities between the Brian and Tayar people. Seeking permission to depart, the priest commits to informing Hakan as soon as he obtains the results of his examination. Nervously, Lucina calls out to Hakan, her voice trembling with anxiety. She admits her desire to share something with him and begins to speak hesitantly. The truth she reveals is that she is an illegitimate child, her true mother being a renowned prostitute in Brian, not Baroness Berg as previously claimed. She confides her fear that Hakan might call off their marriage upon learning this secret. She acknowledges her prior deception and offers a heartfelt apology. In response, Hakan tenderly lifts Lucina into his arms, assuring her that he will never abandon her unless she chooses to push him away. He expresses remorse for not disclosing the potential risks associated with birthing a child from the Dragon Tribe sooner, explaining that he was apprehensive about disappointing her. Drawing his face closer to Lucina's, he pleads for her forgiveness and promises a future of openness and honesty between them. Their kiss serves as the solemn seal of their renewed vows and commitments. Upon awakening, Adair's memory retraces the recent events, including the illusions that played out in her mind. It dawns on her that these experiences were likely the result of dark magic. In a state of urgency, 
she implores the guard to summon Hakan without delay, emphasizing her need to urgently alert him. Hakan explains to Lucina that his mother loved Lakin more than she loved him. He then blames himself for Lakin's death. However, deep down, Hakan understands that his mother suffers from immense guilt because Lakin died while protecting him, as their mother had requested. Eventually, Hakan smiles and expresses his gratitude to Lucina for saving his mother. He believes that without Lucina's intervention, he would have lived in deep remorse. Suddenly, Lucina feels embarrassed and asks Hakan to let her down. Hakan reasons that due to her weakened body, as the priest had mentioned earlier, Lucina shouldn't push herself. Despite this, Lucina gives her best effort and mentions that it's all right, even if they're just walking, as she hasn't taken a single step today. Out of nowhere, a guard arrives with a radiant smile, informing Hakan that Adar has regained consciousness. As a result, they make their way to Adar's chamber. Upon seeing Adair asleep, Hawkins' expression becomes one of confusion. Unexpectedly, a sound from behind calls out to him, catching him off guard. It is Garrett, bearing a tray of medicines. She informs Hawken that Adar fell asleep just moments ago. Curious about his mother's condition, Hawken inquires with Garrett, while Lucina draws nearer to Adar's bedside. Garrett explains that it might take some time for Adar to make a full recovery. She also expresses her desire to take Adir to the Queen's palace and care for her there. In response, Lucina offers to look after Adar in her own palace. However, Garrett appears perturbed, explaining that it's a tradition for the Queen Mother to be attended to by the late Queen. She questions Lucina's knowledge of Tayer's laws, which she seems to lack despite having lived there for some time. Hakan steps in to address Garrett's query, suggesting that Lucina can gradually learn about Tyre and that it's never too late. Annoyed, Hakan asserts that Garrett should show respect towards Lucina, as Lucina will be the one bearing Hakan's child. Despite her frustration, Garrett manages to force a smile, acknowledging that she understands. Turning his gentle gaze towards Lucina, Hakan assures her that he will provide her with a book about Tayar's culture and laws, and encourages her to ask any questions she might have. However, Lucina hesitates to respond due to her inability to read. While Hakan carries Lucina, guiding her back, she confides in him about her inability to read. Hakan reassures her explaining that the book is not written in Tayar's language. However, their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of a guard who informs Hakan about a tribal meeting. Hakan requests permission to leave and gently sets Lucina down. As Hakan departs, Lucina's gaze shifts downward. Unexpectedly, a voice emerges from behind, inquiring about Lucina's troubled expression. It's Gile who approaches her. While seated, Lucina inquires about Gile's well-being. Amidst a bout of coughing, Gile manages to assure her that he's all right. He also expresses concern for Lucina regarding her fainting episode the previous day. Lucina explains that she is feeling better now, attributing her fainting to an excessive use of her healing power. Gile appears puzzled as he had only recently learned about the side effects of such a divine power, like Lucina's. Lucina herself is further perplexed, as she doesn't view her ability as a divine power. She recounts how, as a child, she discovered this ability after getting hurt. Whenever she wished to be relieved of pain, she would find herself healed. Lucina goes on to confide in Gile that she has kept this power a secret from others out of fear that they might exploit her. However, she holds on to the hope that by revealing her healing power to Hakan, he will provide her with protection. 
Gile acknowledges the genuine protection Hakan would offer Lucina. However, as he envisions a scenario where Lucina gives birth to Hakan's child and ascends to the throne, while Gile is coerced into practicing dark magic by Garrett, he believes that keeping Lucina's healing power a secret, especially from Hakan, would be wise. He advises Lucina not to place too much trust in Hakan, leaving her perplexed. He raises the question of what might happen if Hakan were to choose between Lucina and the interests of Tayar. Jile assumes that for the sake of Tayar, Hakan might disregard Lucina's importance. Nonetheless, Lucina recalls Hakan's prior assurances, which reinforce her faith in him. Jile, however, continues his attempt to manipulate Lucina's thoughts, suggesting that Hakan might exploit her healing power. Lucina, viewing this as a positive aspect, remains undeterred, much to Gile's annoyance. He finds it hard to believe that Lucina is deeply in love with Hakan. Gile wonders whether, had he been the first to meet Lucina rather than Hakan, she might have fallen in love with him. As he indulges in this thought, Gile's face flushes red and his heartbeat quickens. Still, he persists in advising Lucina to keep her healing power a secret. Shifting the conversation, Jilly inquires about the expression Lucina had earlier. She confides in him that Hawken plans to provide her with a book about Tayar, but she is unable to read. Lucina also shares her fear of admitting the truth, concerned that people might ridicule her. Recognizing an opening, Gile proposes to teach Lucina how to read. In Lucina's palace, Satiti is overcome with excitement. Upon learning that Lucina will be studying reading and writing under Gile's guidance. The prospect of having someone as brilliant as Gile as her teacher feels almost unbelievable to her. Lucina wears a puzzled expression, prompting Titi to elaborate further on Gile's accomplishments. She mentions how he managed to master the national language by the age of six and, by the time he turned 15, had achieved fluency in various scripts and languages from different kingdoms. Titidai emphasizes that there's no one else as intelligent as Gile, and she admits to feeling envious of Lucina's opportunity. Upon hearing this, Lucina asks if Titi also desires to learn. Titi explains that, due to family responsibilities, she hasn't had the chance to pursue learning. Nevertheless, Lucina persistently asks if Titi would like to learn alongside her, as she had already requested Gile to teach Titi as well. This revelation surprises Titi, but Lucina's smile reassures her that learning together could be more enjoyable than going alone. Titi's delight knows no bounds as she states her strong desire for this, expressing that serving Lucina is the most fulfilling thing she has ever done. She also extends her heartfelt gratitude to Lucina. Lucina experiences a sense of happiness seeing Titi's enthusiastic response. Deep in thought while walking, Gilei recalls the moment when Lucina expressed her eagerness to learn alongside him. Reflecting on it causes Gilei to blush. For him, teaching reading and writing comes effortlessly. He also entertains the idea that by growing closer to Lucina, he might eventually have a chance to escape with her. Upon reaching the front door, Gile comes to a sudden halt. He is taken aback by the sight of Garrett welcoming him there, Adar resting on a bed nearby. Garrett proceeds to signal the servants to exit the room, leaving only the two of them. Gile stammers, questioning the reason for Ader's presence. With confidence, Anitz explains that the Queen Mother is to be attended to as per the tradition of the late Queen's service. Although Garrett's statement is valid, Gile raises a point of curiosity, asking why Garrett has chosen to adhere to this tradition after a decade has passed. Garrett's demeanor turns serious as she informs Gile that Adar has regained her senses. 
She explains that Adar spoke of the black magic that had caused chaos within the palace, and insisted on summoning Hakan. Garrett realizes that the illusions created by Gile's black magic will gradually fade from people's memories. For those unaware of their situation, it might appear as if they had lost their minds and then fled. However, Adair's case is different. She managed to endure for the past decade without succumbing to this illusion. Garrett speculates that Adar possesses some level of resistance, allowing her to recall the actual events. This revelation fills Gile with fear, but Garrett offers reassurance by revealing her plan. She possesses a sedative that, when consumed, induces a deep sleep and clarifies the mind. She intends to administer this sedative to Adar through her food consistently. She subsequently resolves to cease employing black magic on Adar, opting instead to direct her efforts towards Lucina. Upon hearing this, Gile promptly declines the proposal. However, Garrett probes his rationale, prompting Gile to swiftly concoct a reason. He expresses concern that he's uncertain about the effects of his black magic on the people of Brian. He worries about the possibility of Lucina recalling the illusions he's crafted and then disclosing them to Hacken, a scenario he deems unsafe for them. Garrett takes Gile's explanation into consideration which brings a sense of relief to Gile. Consequently, Garrett asserts that she must brainstorm an alternative approach. Following the tribal meeting, Hakan wears a concerned expression. Tehran inquires if something is amiss, prompting Hakan to voice his anxiety about his mother's well-being in the Queen's palace. Tehran explains that his initial concern had been Adair's insistence on remaining with Lakin's body but she ultimately complied with Garrett's guidance without any trouble. Learning this, Hakan feels a sense of relief. Turan goes on to share that Adair appears to be in better condition now, and he speculates that her previous mental distress might have been due to living in close proximity to Lakin's remains. Hakan then informs Turan that the tribal meeting has decided to relocate Lakin's body to Mazarlik, following the birth of the Guardian Dragon. Tehran teases Hakan, remarking that this means Hakan should spend more time visiting Lucina's palace. Despite this, Haskins' conscience in Lucina's well-being remains, leading him to consider waiting until he receives the results of Lucina's health assessment before making any hasty decisions. Abruptly, their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of the priest, who carries news that he needs to share with Hakan regarding Lucina. This information catches Hakan off guard. Meanwhile, Gile is reviewing the assessment papers of Lucina and Titi. He praises Titi for her exceptional results, while acknowledging that Lucina still has much more to learn. Titi attempts to reassure Lucina, reminding her that this is her first experience with reading and writing. However, a sudden gust of wind sweeps through causing the papers to scatter into the air. Lucina feels something enter her eye and attempts to rub it out. Gile intervenes swiftly, preventing her and offering to assist by blowing away the debris from her eye. From a distance, Hakan observes Gile's close proximity to Lucina, igniting a surge of anger within him. Burning with anger, Hakan demands to know what Gile and Lucina are up to. Startled by Hakan's voice, Lucina and Jilai turn toward him in shock. Hakan, still seething with rage, approaches them menacingly. Lucina and Gilai are gripped by fear as they remember the last time Hakan was furious with Gilai and had grabbed his collar. Determined to avoid a repeat of that situation, Lucina anxiously tries to explain what happened, but her words come out incoherent. Fortunately, Titi steps in as a translator, clarifying that there was dust in Lucina's eyes, and Gile had helped her remove it. Despite her struggles to explain, Lucina also stresses that there is nothing romantic between her and Gile. Desperate to make Hakan understand, Lucina grabs his robe and pulls herself closer, 
declaring her love for Hakan and pleading with him not to misunderstand the situation. Hearing her explanations clearly, Hakan finally relaxes and says he comprehends the situation. He initially thought Lucina couldn't understand Tayor's language, but now realizes she can't read at all. Hakan appreciates Lucina's effort to learn and commends her for finding a good teacher in Gile. Turning to Gile, Hakan requests that he teach Lucina and Titi to the best of his abilities, to which Gile agrees, estimating it will take one month. In a somewhat teasing tone, Hakan mentions Gilai's lack of battlefield prowess but praises his intelligence, placing his trust in Gilai as a teacher. As they shake hands, Hakan's demeanor turns serious as he warns Gilai that he won't tolerate any inappropriate behavior towards Lucina. Releasing Gilai's swollen hand, Hakan suggests wrapping up the lesson as evening approaches. He then carries Lucina and announces his intention to take her back to her palace. They leave Gile behind as they depart. On his way back, Gile can't help but feel a tinge of jealousy that Lucina chose Hakan over him. When he returns home, he is taken aback to find Garrett there. Meanwhile, Hakan informs Lucina of the results of her health assessment. He explains that she is simply lacking in nutrition and is weak, but should recover quickly. Lucina wonders if her healing power has contributed to her swift recovery. Hakan continues to elaborate, mentioning that her endurance and quick recovery will help her withstand the fire energy from him. However, he expresses concern for her well-being. Lucina reflects that despite her healing ability, her body may not be completely healthy. Hakan tells her that the priest will prepare a remedy to restore her energy, and they will monitor her progress. He explains that in two months' time, his period of prosperity is expected to begin, and he, too, will need to take the remedy to control his fire energy. Confused, Lucina asks about the period of prosperity, and Hakan explains that it's the time when the dragon race has the highest chance of having descendants due to the increased aura of fire. He gently touches Lucina's face and advises her to assess her health after two months to proceed to the next step. As Hakan prepares to leave, Lucina suddenly grabs his robe and asks if they can sleep together. Hakan blushes deeply at the request. Lucina clarifies that she doesn't want to sleep alone for the next two months and simply wishes to have him by her side at night. She emphasizes that it's just about sleeping together. Reluctantly, Hakan agrees. And they find themselves on Hakan's bed, with Lucina overjoyed to have him close. However, Hakan can't help but feel frustrated. Lucina then timidly requests if she can hold Hakan's hand while they sleep, and, blushing, asks if they can share a kiss, emphasizing that it will be just a kiss. Before Hakan can respond, Lucina leans in closer, and Hakan struggles to control his desire. And so, they share a passionate kiss. But suddenly, Hakan, overwhelmed by desire, pins Lucina down. He gently strokes her hair, but quickly regains his composure. Stepping back, he acknowledges that what they did was wrong. Maintaining a safe distance, Hakan suggests that they should sleep in separate rooms, his face blushing. He insists it's the best course of action for them at the moment. Hakan also mentions that kissing is prohibited during the next two months. Lucina can't help but ask why, to which Hakan explains that he won't be able to control himself if they continue to kiss. Lucina, still hopeful, suggests they could at least hold hands, but Hakan firmly states that they should not sleep in the same room. Disheartened, Lucina questions if, for the next two months, they will simply stare at each other, to which Hakan reluctantly confirms, saying it's the only way to ensure their safety. Hearing this, Lucina can't hold back her tears and asks Hakan why he decided this now, after they had held hands and kissed, which he seemed to accept. Frustrated, Hakan suggests that Lucina tie his hands if she wants. He hands her a band and instructs her to tie his hands so she can do as she pleases. However, 
Lucina finishes tying Hacken's hands. Hacken then tells her that she can do whatever she wishes. Slowly, she draws her face closer to Hacken's, as if she's about to kiss him. Meanwhile, in Gilly's room, Garrett, who has been waiting for him, urges Gilly to use black magic on Hakan. Garrett argues that despite Hakan being a dragon and a great king, he is also a tire and thus susceptible to black magic. Gilly tries to remind her of the dangers of using black magic on a king and the risk of discovery. However, Garrett views the period of prosperity as their opportunity, as it signifies an increase in violence. She suggests that if Hakan's spouse were to disappear in an unfortunate accident, the elders would advise him to remarry her. Garrett insists that Gile perform the black magic, with the target being to make Hakan accidentally kill Lucina. Though Gile is trembling and refuses, Garrett promises him that it will be the last time, and afterward he can live as he pleases. Reluctantly, Gile begins to prepare the ritual for the black magic. Back in Hakan's room, Lucina continues to kiss him, noticing his rapidly beating heart. Lucina decides to stop, but Hakan suddenly declares that he can't hold back any longer. In an instant, he frees himself from the band on her hands and pins Lucina down on the bed, leaving her bewildered. With his face all flushed, Hakan gazes at Lucina, struggling to contain himself. But he regains his composure and, pulling away from Lucina, realizes that things shouldn't go any further. He swiftly turns around and shouts to his guards to fetch the unbreakable chain used for the guardian dragon. Lucina can't help but burst into laughter, surprising Hakan, who can't believe she's still able to find humor in such a precarious situation. In Gilly's chamber, he reluctantly readies himself for the black magic ritual, his thoughts occupied with a secret plan. Garrett notices his hesitance and inquires about his intentions. Gilet is reluctant to resort to black magic when Hakan is with Lucina, fearing it could endanger her, so he contemplates an alternative approach to ensure Lucina's safety. He then explains that if he were to simulate a heart attack and faint, the magic would be dispelled. By repeating this act, Hakan would become as alert as a deer. Garrett remains puzzled, asking what the purpose of this plan is. Rising to his feet, Gile declares that he will modify the magic equipment and retrieves a bundle of candles. He explains that these candles are crafted from his own blood, and if he uses them, the magic's effect will persist, even if he loses consciousness due to a heart attack. Garrett questions why he didn't suggest this earlier. Gile leans in closer and whispers something to her prompting a pleased reaction from Garrett after hearing Gilly's explanation. The following day, Lucina engages in a conversation with Puka, reflecting on the previous night when she used a chain to ensure Hakan slept peacefully. This revelation prompts Puka to burst into laughter. Puka then broaches the topic of whether Hakan and Lucina will indeed abstain from intimacy for two months reminding Lucina of her desire to bear Hakan's child. Lucina explains that Hakan advised her to strengthen her body first because, despite her healing powers, she still lacks physical strength. Hearing this explanation, Puka offers his perspective, suggesting that it might be the earth energy within her body that weakens her. In a counterintuitive twist, having a child with Hakan might actually restore her energy. Lucina still struggles to fully grasp what Puka is trying to convey. Puka adds that a child imbued with the energy of fire could potentially stabilize her energy, and even if there were issues with nutrition, as long as she ate enough, there should be no problem. Lucina's comprehension dawns, and she suddenly becomes excited at the prospect, leaving Puka visibly shocked by her reaction. Seeking reassurance, Lucina inquires about the potential dangers of carrying a dragon's child. Puka clarifies that while it may pose risks for the average person, it should be perfectly safe for her. He goes on to explain that during pregnancy, she won't be able to utilize her healing powers, as they will automatically be directed toward protecting her from the fire energy 
emanating from the child in her womb. Puka then raises a critical question. Even if she loses her ability to heal, is she still willing to have a child with Hakan? Lucina follows up by asking if her healing powers will return once the child is born. Puka confidently responds with a resounding yes. Lucina can't help but exclaim why Puka didn't share this information with her earlier, despite never explicitly asking him about it. Lucina excitedly departs from her room, eager to share the news with Hakan that she no longer needs to rely on pills and waiting, as her healing powers now ensure a safe pregnancy, alleviating Hakan's concerns. Inside Hakan's chamber, the servants deliver the remedy from the priest as planned. Noticing that the servant has brought something else along, Hakan inquires about it. The servant explains that Tehran suggested decorating the room, given Lucina's frequent visits, so she brought scented candles and flowers. Hakan responds with a smile, even acknowledging that Tehran's ideas can prove useful at times. With that settled, Hakan proceeds to take his remedy, while another servant arranges the flowers and candles neatly on the table. As he sips the potion designed to suppress his fire energy, Hakan reflects on how he should find today a bit more bearable than yesterday. Once the servants depart, Hakan gazes at the flowers, taking in their fragrance, and wonders if Lucina will appreciate the thoughtful gesture. Lucina arrives at Hakan's chamber, and the guards promptly inform Hakan of her presence. As Lucina steps into Hakan's chamber, her face lights up with joy. She approaches Hakan, eager to share her news. However, Hakan stands there with an unusual expression, and suddenly, he roughly seizes Lucina's hand, causing her pain. This prompts Lucina to call out his name in bewilderment. Without uttering a word, Hakan then pulls Lucina closer and firmly grasps her waist. As Hakan withdraws his hand from Lucina, he gazes at the shattered accessories on his hand. An unusual sensation coursing through him. His expression wrestles with inner turmoil as he grapples with what's happening to him. Lucina becomes alarmed by Hakan's abrupt response, her fear evident in her expression. Observing Lucina's reaction, Hakan is caught off guard and quickly apologizes, explaining that he's not feeling well today, and suggests that she should retire to her palace for the night. Unbeknownst to him, the black magic from Gile's candle is taking its toll. Even Hakan himself struggles to comprehend why he acted so harshly toward Lucina, leading him to ponder whether the fire energy within him is intensifying, despite it being two months early. Returning to her palace, Lucina finds herself in her chamber, lying in her bed, and contemplates the recent unsettling encounter with Hakan. She's puzzled by Hakan's uncharacteristic behavior, which left her feeling frightened. Unable to sleep due to her lingering thoughts, Titi suggests that she try immersing herself in holy water to find some solace and ease her restlessness. Lucina decides to follow Titi's advice and ventures to the holy water. After immersing herself in the calming waters, Lucina emerges, feeling rejuvenated. She even playfully showcases her swimming skills to Titi. On the other side of the holy water, Hakan arrives with the hope that submerging himself in it might help calm his inner turmoil. However, he pauses upon hearing Lucina's voice echoing nearby. Turning in the direction of the sound, he's greeted by the sight of Lucina wearing a radiant smile while Titi assists her in drying her hair. The image captivates Hakan, and he can't help but be entranced by the beauty of Lucina's joyful expression. Yet, his demeanor suddenly shifts, influenced by the black magic being cast by Gilai from a distant location. While casting the magic spell, Gilai provides an explanation of his black magic's workings. He clarifies that his black magic can only conjure illusions as long as he maintains the incantation. When he loses consciousness, those under its influence will snap out of it. Gilai further elucidates that by combining the spell with the candle, the affected person will perceive illusions whenever they sense someone's love. Initially, these illusions are brief and easily overcome, but over time, they grow more potent and challenging to distinguish from reality.
At the moment, Hacken is ensnared in an illusion featuring Lucina and Gile, which stokes the fires of his anger. In a burst of rage, he approaches Lucina menacingly. Lucina is taken aback by Hacken's sudden presence. But as their eyes meet, something within Hacken snaps him back to reality. He comes to a sudden halt, visibly shocked. Lucina, trembling with concern, asks if Hacken is all right or if he's been hurt. Even Titi hides herself behind a pillar, sensing the tension. Hacken attempts to explain that he thought Lucina had fallen, prompting his hasty arrival. Seeing something amiss with Hacken, Lucina presses further, inquiring about his well-being. Hacken, however, avoids her gaze and claims that he's merely a little exhausted, assuring her that the holy water will help him recover. Recalling that she has something important to share with Hakan, Lucina attempts to broach the subject. However, Hakan abruptly turns his back to her, remarking that it's late and instructing her to retire for the night. He then directs Titi to escort Lucina back to her palace, leaving her perplexed by his sudden behavior. Even Hakan himself is left feeling unsettled as he continues to experience inexplicable anger in Lucina's presence. He begins to wonder if he's losing his sanity. Meanwhile, Jilai, still immersed in his black magic, elaborates on the lasting effects of the spell. He explains that the emotions it generates will persist even after the illusion has dissipated, gradually nurturing negative sentiments within Hakan towards Lucina. Jilai asserts that there's no need to physically harm Lucina, as Hakan will naturally distance himself from her. Jile believes that this approach won't harm Lucina physically, but will gradually erode her relationship with Hakan. He speculates that Lucina will eventually grow disillusioned and leave the palace, seeking him out to depart together. Seeking answers and troubled by his own behavior, Hakan decides to consult with the priest, sharing his concerns about the strange changes he's experiencing. The following day, Lucina and Titi are engrossed in their lessons with Gile as their teacher. However, Lucina appears to be lost in thought, her mind drifting away. Gile repeatedly calls her name, and when she finally snaps back to reality, she's taken aback. Concerned, Gile instructs Titi to retrieve another book from the library and seizes the opportunity to speak with Lucina privately. He inquires about what's been bothering her expressing his worry and asking if something has transpired between Lucina and Hakan. Lucina's eyes well up with tears as she struggles to hold back her emotions. Observing her distress, Gile asks if Hakan has been angry with her, or if he has mistreated her in any way. Lucina, with a sorrowful expression, reassures Gile that it's not the case. Instead, she reveals that Hakan has been consistently in a foul mood lately. Gile experiences a wave of relief that Hakan hasn't physically harmed Lucina. However, he attempts to empathize with Lucina by suggesting that Hakan's behavior can be erratic, akin to that of a child. Lucina, however, becomes defensive, fiercely protecting her beloved's honor. She asserts that Hakan's recent mood swings are a result of the approaching period of prosperity, during which he doesn't feel an optimal condition, affecting his temperament. Jile then proposes that Lucina take a break from seeing Hakan for a while. Lucina hesitates, concerned about missing him. Jile pauses for a moment and then suggests that she write a letter to Hakan as an alternative means of communication allowing them to stay in touch without meeting face to face. Lucina's face instantly brightens with enthusiasm at the prospect of writing a letter to Hakan. Upon completing the letter, Lucina requests Gile's assistance in reviewing it. However, as Gile reads the letter, he appears somewhat taken aback. He carefully rolls up the letter and assures Lucina that it's perfectly fine, offering praise for her effort and telling her that she's done an excellent job. Lucina is elated to hear his words, particularly when Gila adds that Hakan will appreciate it. She holds hope that Hakan will be pleased when he receives her letter. In Hakan's chamber, the priest arrives to assess his condition. 
He reassures Haken that his instability is merely a result of the approaching period of prosperity and poses no life-threatening danger. Still, Haken seeks further clarification, prompting the priest to elaborate. He explains that as the flame's intensity grows stronger, it becomes increasingly challenging to control one's emotions, particularly when harboring special feelings for someone. This is a common experience for everyone. Haken acknowledges the priest's explanation and grants him permission to depart. As the priest exits Haken's chamber, a servant enters, bearing a letter from Lucina. Haken accepts the letter with curiosity, wondering about its contents. The servant inquires whether she should light a candle. He grants permission for the candle to be lit. As Haken begins to peruse Lucina's letter, he becomes perplexed by the jumbled words and phrases she has penned, finding the writing somewhat amusing. He even shares a laugh at her unconventional style. However, as he continues to read, the insidious effects of the black magic emanating from the candle start to take hold, further distorting the words on the page and transforming the once loving letter into one filled with hatred. With each passing moment, the illusions envelop Haken more tightly, making it increasingly difficult to resist. Finally, unable to contain his growing agitation, Hakan lets out a loud, exasperated shout to quell the turmoil within. This sudden outburst prompts the guards stationed outside his chamber to rush in, expressing concern for Haken's well-being. Trembling and visibly distressed, Haken discovers that the letter has been torn to shreds, leaving him bewildered upon returning to reality. Upon seeing the letter in tatters on the floor, the guard wonders if there was something awry with the letter. Haken then picks up the torn pieces of paper, pondering why he had reacted so strongly in anger. The news of Haken's anger upon receiving Lucina's letter quickly circulates among the servants, leading them to assume that Lucina has penned something that has ignited Hakan's fury. Titi, who happens to be nearby and overhears the gossip, is taken aback by the revelation, particularly because she is aware that Lucina had sought Gile's assistance in composing the letter. A day later, Titi rushes toward Gile, her expression angry and agitated. Gile inquires about the reason for her urgency, noting that it's not yet time for their study session. Titi insists that he speak with her before Lucina arrives, so Gile leads her to a secluded spot and asks her to explain what has transpired. Still carrying an air of frustration, Titi confronts Gile, demanding to know what he did. Gile is momentarily stunned, his mind racing with thoughts about whether Titi has discovered his use of black magic. However, Titi continues, revealing that Haken became angry while reading the letter from Lucina. Hearing this, Gile breathes a sigh of relief, realizing that the issue pertains to the letter itself. Titi questions why Gilai didn't inform Lucina when she wrote something unconventional, and he explains that while there were indeed some spelling mistakes, the content of the letter was entirely sound. Gile further elaborates that he believed Haken would be deeply moved by receiving such a heartfelt letter, imperfections and all, and thus saw no need to make corrections. Titi then speculates whether Haken's anger stemmed from Lucina's lack of writing skills. While Gile wonders if his black magic might have influenced the letter in some way. To their surprise, Lucina suddenly emerges from behind, wearing a sorrowful expression as she addresses them, revealing that Haken became angry when reading her letter. In a state of panic, Titi questions why Lucina ventured there alone, to which Lucina explains that she couldn't locate Titi, prompting her to come looking for them. Her countenance grows even more despondent as she speculates on why Hakan might have become upset over her subpar writing skills. Titi promptly reassures Lucina, insisting that her assessment is mistaken and emphasizing that Hakan is not the type to react that way. Gile joins Titi in comforting Lucina, offering his agreement with Titi's words. In that moment, Lucina begins to believe that there might be a misunderstanding as she places her trust in Hakan. Gilai, however, ponders the reason behind his agreement. 
given that his ultimate goal is to sow doubt between Lucina and Hakan, hoping that Lucina will turn to him instead. He wonders if it's because he genuinely doesn't want to see Lucina hurt. Out of the blue, Lucina announces her intention to speak with Hakan. Gile is suddenly filled with worry expressing concerns about whether it's a good idea given Hakan's perpetually foul mood of late. Lucina, however, remains resolute, asserting that she's determined to talk to him because she has something important to convey. Titi lends her support to Lucina's decision, encouraging her to engage with Hakan and clear up any misunderstandings between them. Just as Lucina is about to depart, Jilai unexpectedly seizes her hand, preventing her from leaving. Lucina turns to him, puzzled by his actions. In a nervous tone, Jile reminds Lucina that they have their study session scheduled for today. Lucina hesitates for a moment, torn between her desire to speak with Hakan and her commitment to her studies. Titi steps in to reassure Lucina, promising to tutor her after her conversation with Hakan and urging her not to worry. Jile, feeling helpless, understands that there's little more he can do to dissuade Lucina. Lucina expresses her gratitude to Titi, and then rushes off to Hakan's palace. Watching her depart, Gile begins to contemplate the need to follow her. In his chamber, Hakan finds himself pondering recent events. Despite the looming period of prosperity, he's been feeling unlike himself lately. He recalls losing his temper, but the reason behind it eludes him. Frustrated and seeking answers, Hakan decides to discontinue his remedy, suspecting it might be the cause, yet the problem persists. His frustration grows as he grapples with the mystery. Suddenly, a memory sparks in his mind, the servant who had delivered the candle. Hakan jumps to his feet and begins to pace as he tries to piece together the puzzle. He remembers reading Lucina's letter with the candle nearby and starts to wonder if there's something amiss with it. Just as he steps out of his chamber, he encounters Lucina rushing toward him. Surprised, Hakan inquires about her presence. Lucina then reveals that she has something important to share with him. Quickly scanning their surroundings, she leans closer to Hakan and suggests that they move inside. Lucina believes it's best to keep her healing ability a secret from anyone else. Hakan, sensing the urgency, agrees to follow Lucina. Now in Hakan's chamber, they sit together near the table with the scented candle still lit. Hakan then tells Lucina to speak her mind, and she nervously begins to voice her concerns. She mentions her worry about Hakan's recent bad mood and his need to take the remedy due to the impending period of prosperity. Gathering her courage, Lucina makes a heartfelt plea for Hakan to cease taking the remedy, revealing her own healing ability and assuring him that there's no need for concern. However, Hakan's response leaves Lucina bewildered. He remains silent, but something appears to be stirring in his mind upon hearing about Lucina's healing ability. Observing Hakan's expression, Lucina hesitantly inquires why he appears that way. Unfortunately, Hakan's thoughts are ensnared by the dark magic manipulated by Garrett through Gile. All he can discern now is Lucina apparently confiding in Gile. Hakan's frustration mounts, and he accuses Lucina of treachery and deception. Lucina, upon hearing this, is both perplexed and fearful. While attempting to calm Hakan, her words falter, but her efforts yield no success. The dark magic further exacerbates Hakan's anger, and he now envisions Lucina alongside Gile. With an abrupt movement, Hakan rises, teetering on the brink of attacking Lucina. Outside Hakan's chamber, Gilai appears concerned as he approaches. However, Lucina's scream suddenly startles Gile and the guards. Gile rushes into Hakan's chamber to find Lucina lying on the ground. He promptly instructs a guard to summon assistance. Turning to Lucina, he inquires about her well-being. Lucina appears terrified and conveys to Gile her concerns about Hakan's unusual behavior. Gile, on the other hand, explains that Hakan's aggressive tendencies can surface during periods of prosperity and advises Lucina to keep her distance. Nevertheless, 
Lucina worries that Hakan may pose a threat to others and expresses a desire to use her healing powers to aid him. Gilai, however, holds a different perspective. Believing it's too risky for Lucina to use her powers in Hakan's current state, despite their potential effectiveness. Out of the blue, Hakan, still ensnared by the dark magic's influence, erupts in rage and seizes Gilay by the collar. Fearing for the safety of others, Lucina utilizes her restorative abilities while attempting to bring Hakan back to his senses. She persists in channeling her healing powers toward Hakan, gradually guiding him back to a state of bewildered clarity. Lucina finally perceives that Hakan is regaining his composure, which provides her with relief. However, having expended a significant amount of energy, she succumbs to unconsciousness due to her depleted power. A worried expression crosses Hakan's face as he ponders what transpired and contemplates Lucina's role in helping him. The servant and the priest eventually arrive, but one of the attendants raises suspicions. Hakan notifies the priest of his intention to accompany Lucina to her room and instructs the priest to attend to Gilay instead. After Hakan and Lucina have exited the room, the dubious servant discreetly dispatches a message using a carrier pigeon. Subsequently, the priest delivers his findings to Hakan, confirming the presence of dark magic within the candles. Hakan also inquires about Lucina's well-being, prompting the priest to inform him that Lucina has sustained a bruise. Overwhelmed by guilt, Hakan makes his way to Lucina's chamber to assess her condition. Inside, Titi apprises him that Lucina remains unconscious, but offers reassurance, suggesting that Lucina would likely be deeply comforted by his presence when she regains consciousness. Observing Lucina still lying motionless on the bed, Hakan is overwhelmed with guilt, comprehending the role he played while under the dark magic's influence, leading to Lucina's harm. Hakan earnestly implores Lucina to awaken, his heart heavy with the desire to offer her a heartfelt apology. However, a sudden commotion erupts as the guards rush into the chamber in a state of panic urgently conveying to Hakan that the dragon's hatching fortress is under attack. Earlier, inside Garrett's palace, her servant arrived with a report stating that Hakan had found the candle and disposed of it. The servant expressed concern about the risk of exposure, but Garrett remained composed and put forth a plan. Garrett suggested that they should devise a strategy to ensure Hakan's temporary absence from the palace, enabling them to frame Lucina for the incident. Hurriedly making his way to the fortress, Hakan's anger burns fiercely. He hasn't had a chance to tend to Lucina, but the sudden attack by the Dragon Slayers demands his immediate attention. The last time the castle's defenses were breached was a decade ago, resulting in significant damage and the loss of Hakan's own brother in that conflict. Hakan is resolute in his determination to confront and defeat the Dragon Slayers, seeking revenge for the tragic events of the past. Upon their arrival, Hakan inquires about the situation from the guard, who reports that there have been no major attacks except for the breach of the barrier. Hakan is taken aback by this revelation, initially thinking the situation was urgent. However, he begins to contemplate whether the attack was deliberately orchestrated to lure him there. With a sense of caution, Hakan orders his troops to return to the palace firmly believing that they've fallen into a trap meant to draw him out. As they prepare to depart, the Dragon Slayer who had been involved in the previous attack suddenly appears. Battle ensues, but unfortunately, Hakan is struck by a black arrow wielded by the Dragon Slayer leader. Inside the palace, Lucina awakens and anxiously inquires about Hakan's whereabouts from Titi. Titi explains that Hakan had been with Lucina when she was unconscious, but he had to rush to defend the castle during an attack. Upon hearing this, Lucina hurries out of her room to search for Hakan. Tehran and the others arrive on horseback, their expressions somber. Lucina approaches Tehran and queries him about Hakan's condition. Tehran informs her that Hakan sustained serious injuries and that he's on his way to see Hakan. Learning of Hakan's peril, Lucina's worry becomes evident. 
She then informs Tehran that she intends to visit Hakan, stating that she can heal Hakan. Tehran consents to escort Lucina to see Hakan. However, another guard interjects, emphasizing the need for permission to enter, even for Lucina. Tehran counters, asserting that Lucina will soon become Teo's official queen and no one else is more qualified to assess Hak Khan's health. With this, Lucina rides alongside Turan to the location where Hakan is convalescing, a significant cave protected by dragons, one of Tayar's many sacred sites. Turan elucidates that this place holds the utmost sanctity, serving as the birthplace of all previous Tayar kings. As Lucina readies herself to enter the cave, Turan offers a word of caution emphasizing the absence of light within. Lucina inquires if Turan will accompany her, but he explains that he cannot enter voluntarily. Lucina takes a moment to contemplate the situation, noting Turan's faith in her, even if he cannot enter the cave himself. Expressing her gratitude, Lucina thanks Turan before proceeding into the cave. Unbeknownst to her, Turan forgets to convey that Hakan is in his true form, hoping that Lucina won't be taken aback. With unwavering determination to heal Hakan, Lucina steps into the dark cave. As she delves deeper, she senses a warmth that strikes her as oddly familiar. This energy draws her in, and she decides to follow it, believing it may lead her to Hakan. However, as she reaches the source of the warmth, she is surprised to find not Hakan, but a wounded dragon, Lucina cautiously approaches, recognizing the dragon from her childhood. The dragon opens its eyes upon her approach, and without hesitation, Lucina inquires if the dragon remembers their encounter from ten years ago. She also asks if the dragon is the guardian of the cave. The dragon Hakan, in his true form, is puzzled by Lucina's statement that they had met a decade ago. Lucina then discloses her purpose in seeking her husband. However, Upon noticing the dragon's injury, Lucina extends her hand, offering to heal it. At that moment, Hakan finally recognizes Lucina as the girl who had healed him a decade ago, unable to believe that he hadn't realized her identity, despite her constant presence by his side. The dragon turns to reveal its wound to Lucina, and without hesitation, she employs her healing abilities to mend the dragon's injury. Suddenly, the dragon undergoes a transformation, shifting into Hakan's human form. Lucina, baffled by the sudden disappearance of the dragon and the emergence of Hakan, searches around in perplexity. Without delay, Hakan embraces Lucina, expressing his gratitude for her salvation, just as she had done for him ten years earlier. Lucina seeks confirmation, asking if the dragon was indeed Hakan. Hakan affirms this acknowledging that Lucina has saved his life on two occasions. He carries a heavy burden of remorse for his actions under the dark magic's influence and the harm he had intended to cause Lucina. As Lucina comprehends the circumstances that led to Hakan's past actions, she finds relief, understanding that it wasn't his true will. Acknowledging the dragon as Hakan, Lucina begins to feel a sense of relaxation with a cheerful disposition, she reassures Hakan that she is all right. Recognizing that being under the spell is not something he could control, she notes the synchronicity in their connection, stating that healing Hakan again, much like ten years ago, seems like fate intertwining their lives. Lucina expresses her happiness in being the one to save Hakan once more. Lucina reiterates her special gift explaining that her healing abilities will ensure a safe childbirth for their child, relieving Hakan of any further worry or suffering on her behalf. Overjoyed, Hakan expresses his happiness with a passionate kiss on Lucina's lips. After a while of waiting outside, Tehran spots Hakan carrying Lucina, and both appear to be in perfect health. Tehran's face lights up with joy as he comprehends that Lucina possesses healing abilities. Hakan, still holding Lucina, instructs Turan to prepare his room as soon as they return to the palace. Confused by Hakan's request, Turan seeks clarification. Hakan, 
gazing at Lucina, elaborates on their plans to engage in something they were unable to do before. Initially puzzled, Lucina's face flushes with embarrassment as she grasps the meaning behind Hacken's words. In Lucina's chamber, Titty is surprised to discover that Lucina and Hacken never had their first night together. Lucina confides that she was intoxicated during that time. Lucina proceeds to alleviate Titi's concerns, assuring her that she won't die even if she bypasses her first night. Feeling reassured, Titi now becomes enthusiastic about transforming Lucina into the most resplendent lady in the entire palace. After completing the preparations, Lucina is now prepared to make her way to Hakan's chamber. Lucina proceeds to enter Hakan's chamber, finding him already there, seated on his bed, waiting for her. As she approaches Hakan, her nerves are palpable. He pulls her closer, seating her on his lap, and playfully inquires if she's feeling shy. Hakan expresses his concern about potentially hurting Lucina, but she reassures him once more, reminding him of her healing ability. This reassurance prompts Hakan to burst into laughter as he teases Lucina. Hakan gently places Lucina on his bed and draws his face nearer to hers, bestowing a soft kiss on her lips. As their lips part, Lucina inquires about Hakan's ability to have children, even when he's not in his period of prosperity. Between kisses, Hakan assures her that he can, explaining that the period of prosperity merely heightens the chances of conceiving. Hakan once more asks Lucina if she's comfortable proceeding further. With a radiant smile, Lucina affirms her readiness. With their mutual agreement, Hakan continues their first night together. The next morning, when Turan and Titi see Hakan carrying Lucina out of the chamber, they are filled with joy, particularly upon learning that Lucina is in good health. Turan inquires about Hakan's destination, and Hakan explains that they are heading to the hot springs, considering that Lucina's body must be weary. Hearing Hakan's teasing words, Lucina's face turns crimson with embarrassment. Shyly, Lucina tells Hakan that he should be the one saying that, which elicits laughter from those around. As Turan watches Hakan depart with Lucina, he experiences a sense of relief knowing that Lucina is by Hakan's side. He is particularly heartened by the sight of Hakan's smile, a sight he had never witnessed before. The news of Hakan and Lucina's first night quickly reaches Garrett's ears, and her displeasure is evident. Learning that Lucina is perfectly fine after that night only serves to intensify Garrett's anger, and she harbors a sinister wish for Lucina's demise. To carry out her malevolent intentions, Garrett devises a plan to use black magic on Hakan once more. She dismisses her servants, instructing them to leave so she can contemplate her next steps. After they depart from Garrett's palace, one of the servants discreetly sends a message via a carrier pigeon. Deep within the forest, the message reaches the intended recipient, a member of the Dragon Slayers. Upon reading the message, the Dragon Slayer removes her helmet revealing her face as that of a woman with silver eyes and long blonde hair. She acknowledges that it won't be long before her plan can come to fruition. In Lucina's palace, Hakan divulges the details about the dark candle, explaining how it had caused him to behave strangely due to an unusual spell within. He queries Lucina about her familiarity with such objects, as he had never encountered anything similar in Tayar before. Lucina, concerned by the revelation, admits that she has never come across the practice of casting spells on candles in Brian either. Observing her worry, Hakan provides reassurance, informing her that the person responsible for bringing the candle has been apprehended, though they have yet to identify the creator. While Hakan contemplates the potential involvement of Garrett, he acknowledges the difficulty in accusing her given her apparent incapability of wielding dark magic. Hakan elucidates to Lucina that, based on the priest's insights, the use of dark magic can have severe consequences, such as the destruction of a person's soul and adverse effects on their entire body. As a result, 
He intends to investigate individuals who have exhibited sudden changes in their physical well-being. He advises Lucina to take some time to rest and not dwell on these concerns. After absorbing Hakan's explanation, Lucina contemplates whether Jile might be unwell due to his use of dark magic. Though she sincerely hopes that is not the case. All Lucina knows is that Gile has endured chest pain since childhood and has always taken care of her, leading her to doubt that he would intentionally cause harm. In Gile's residence, Garrett attempts to intimidate him into using dark magic once more. However, Gile stands firm, declaring that he refuses to employ dark magic any longer. He mentions that Hakan has already taken Lucina, and this situation could also put Garrett in danger. It becomes apparent that Garrett is aware of Gile's concerns for Lucina's safety. Although Garrett is visibly displeased, she recognizes that she cannot coerce Gile any further and allows him to leave. As Garrett departs, Gile is left pondering Garrett's true intentions. A week later, with Hakan gently cradling her in his arms, Lucina observes a scar on Hakan's face. He offers reassurance, mentioning that it will heal quickly. Lucina, wanting to help, offers to use her healing abilities. However, a sudden recollection of what Puka had told her surfaces, she won't be able to utilize her healing powers during her pregnancy because her body requires them to protect her from the fiery energy of the child. Inside their chamber, the priest has been summoned to examine Lucina. He exuberantly congratulates her on the news of her pregnancy with the dragon's child. Upon hearing this, Lucina is filled with happiness at the prospect of bearing Hakan's child. The priest advises her to exercise additional caution with her body, emphasizing that even the slightest oversight could lead to severe complications. Hakan tenderly embraces Lucina overwhelmed with joy that she's now carrying his child. With a gentle look in his eyes, he asks Lucina what she desires, perhaps expecting her to request gold or jewels. However, Lucina surprises him with a different wish. In the garden, Hakan is taken aback by Lucina's simple request for fruits. Lucina's rationale is that she believes if she asks for anything more extravagant, Hakan would provide her with mountains of it so she's content with just fruit. Hakan tenderly expresses his love for Lucina by feeding her the fruits. Unbeknownst to them, Puka is discreetly observing from a nearby tree. Upon her return to her chamber, Puka can hardly believe what he witnessed, Hakan's sudden change in behavior. Lucina, however, insists that Hakan has always been exceptionally kind. Puka, ever cautious, reminds Lucina that she must exercise care since neither she nor Hakan can heal from serious injuries now. Nonetheless, Lucina's primary concern is Hakan's safety in battle. Puka suggests seeking help from someone with abilities similar to Lucina's. This idea resonates with Lucina, and she surprises Puka by declaring her agreement. She believes that enlisting the Cameron's assistance might not only ensure her own safety, but also Hakan's and the safety of Tayar as a whole. Lucina approaches Hakan to discuss her plan, but Hakan initially expresses his disagreement. He explains that Tayar has been branded as barbaric by neighboring kingdoms and believes they are unlikely to extend assistance. However, Lucina remains steadfast in her determination to try, and eventually, Hakan concedes, though he can't guarantee the outcome. He agrees to send a letter to the Cameron. Lucina is overjoyed that Hawken is willing to consider her suggestion. Lucina sets about composing the letter with Hawken's guidance. He playfully teases her, remarking that her writing skills have improved considerably since before. Lucina counters by accusing Hawken of implying that she used to be terrible at writing. Not wanting to upset Lucina, Hawken assures her that it's not what he meant. As Lucina concentrates on writing the letter, she is seated on Hakan's lap. He leans in closer, observing how beautiful she appears when she's focused. Showering Lucina with kisses, Hakan suggests they complete the letter and spend some quality time together.
Lucina, however, remains resolute in her task of finishing the letter. Hakan has no choice but to comply, patiently waiting until she completes it. Out of the blue, Hakan broaches the topic of their unborn child, asking Lucina if she has a preference for a boy or a girl. After a moment of reflection, Lucina turns the question back to Hakan, who expresses a wish for a girl. He elaborates, explaining that a dragon's daughter is considered exceedingly precious, as they are a rare occurrence, and they are expected to bear healthy offspring of their kind. Upon hearing this explanation, Lucina affirms that, for her, the gender of the child doesn't matter. Her primary concern is their well-being. Hakan chuckles in agreement with her sentiments, also underscoring that once Lucina gives birth, she will rightfully become the queen of Tayar. As they engage in conversation, a guard stationed outside the chamber interrupts, informing Hakan that Garrett is requesting permission to speak with him. Hakan promptly conveys his response, instructing the guard to tell her to leave. However, Lucina assures him that it's okay, assuming that Garrett must have something important to discuss. Reluctant, but influenced by Lucina's concern, Hakan consents to Garrett's entrance. Given the late hour, Garrett apologizes for her untimely visit. Noticing Lucina's presence, Garrett attempts to be polite and inquires whether she is interrupting. Lucina, puzzled by Garrett's sudden change in attitude towards her, responds that she is not disturbed. Hakan then urges Garrett to divulge her intentions. However, Garrett insists that what she has to share is for the king's ears only and requests Lucina to leave. Hakan, undeterred, asserts that Lucina should remain as she is Tayar's future queen and there should be nothing she cannot know or hear. With that, Garrett reveals that one of the servants who provided the dark candle to Hakan had frequent contact with Gile, suggesting that Gile was the one behind the candle. Upon hearing this revelation, Lucina turns pale, unable to believe that Gile is the true culprit behind the use of dark magic. The next day, Garrett leads Hakan and Turan to the basement, explaining that she noticed Gile frequented this place and it raised suspicions. She further mentions that she was never able to ascertain the contents of this location. Upon their arrival, they find the door locked, and Tehran uses his axe to break it open. Garrett is confident that even if she betrays Gile, he won't be able to betray her in return. Upon entering the room, they discover an array of tools related to dark magic. Hakan is astonished that he was unaware of the existence of such a place. However, he remains suspicious of Garrett's motives in exposing this. Consequently, Hakan decides to apprehend Gile immediately. With Gile now imprisoned, Hakan and Turan pay him a visit for questioning. Turan discreetly suggests to Hakan the possibility that Garrett might have betrayed her own brother to avoid punishment. While Hakan entertains the same thought, they lack concrete evidence to accuse her. Hence, they proceed with the interrogation of Gile, hoping he will divulge the truth. However, despite subjecting Gile to torture, he remains silent and does not implicate Garrett in any way. Hakan and Turan find this hard to believe, particularly Hakan, who is convinced of Garrett's involvement. While walking, Turan inquires about the meeting concerning Lakin's remains, and Hakan explains that it was decided to expedite the process of placing Lakin's body in Meserlik. Typically, this is done after the new guardian dragon is born, but Hakan believes it's best to address the matter before he becomes too preoccupied. Hakan then conveys to Turan that he needs to inform Lucina about all the details. Hakan begins to worry pondering whether Lucina will be shocked upon learning that her teacher is the culprit. Furthermore, he is concerned about not being with her during such trying times, fearing that it might only intensify Lucina's distress. Hakan pays a visit to Lucina, and she warmly welcomes him, mentioning that she's been practicing her writing with Titi. However, Hakan's demeanor suddenly darkens as he delivers the distressing news about Gile. Lucina's expression turns sad, finding it hard to believe that Gile truly intended to harm her and Hakan, despite her previous trust in him. 
In an attempt to console Lucina, Hakan wraps his arms around her in a comforting hug. But there's more news to deliver, and Hakan hesitates before sharing it. Lucina notices his expression and prompts him to reveal what's troubling him. With a heavy heart, Hakan informs her that he needs to leave the palace temporarily, even though he wishes to stay by her side and protect her. He explains that he has to oversee the transfer of Lakin to Mezarek, a process that will take approximately one week. To ease Hakan's worry, Lucina smiles and assures him that she will be just fine during the week without him. A few days later, the day of departure to Mezalek arrives. Hakan, accompanied by his guards, is prepared to leave and is on the verge of bidding farewell to Lucina. He draws nearer, gently caresses Lucina's face, and plants a kiss on her lips. However, Turan reminds him that they need to depart immediately. Though Hakan is filled with concern, he has no option but to leave. Unbeknownst to Hakan, Garrett, aware of his absence, is ready to set her plan in motion to frame Lucina. A few days after Hakan's departure, Lucina, confined to her chamber, grows increasingly bored and impatient, longing for Hakan's return. Titi notices Lucina's restlessness and believes that staying isolated in her room is making her more despondent. To lift Lucina's spirits, Titi suggests they go outside for a walk together. Initially hesitant, Lucina eventually agrees. And as they leave her room, someone takes the opportunity to enter it. While they are enjoying a walk in the fresh air, a guard suddenly approaches them, urging Lucina to accompany him and grabbing her arm. Lucina is taken aback by the sudden and forceful encounter. Titi intervenes, pushing the guard away and inquiring about the situation. The guard explains that they discovered a suspicious object in Lucina's room and insists on inspecting it with her. Lucina is left confused and frightened by this unexpected turn of events, insisting that she doesn't understand what's happening and that no one has entered her room in the past few days. Titi firmly supports Lucina, asserting that it must be a misunderstanding. However, the guard remains indifferent forcibly pulling Lucina's hand and insisting that she goes with him. Titi attempts to shield Lucina, but the guard pushes her to the ground and continues to press Lucina to accompany him. The guard forcibly ushers Lucina inside the room, where Garrett awaits with a devious expression on her face. She casually mentions that the guard discovered something unusual in Lucina's room. The guard proceeds to present Lucina with the item, and it is revealed to be a dark candle. Confused, Lucina questions the presence of the candle, but Garrett seizes this opportunity to accuse her. Lucina attempts to defend herself, explaining that she has no knowledge of the candle. However, Garrett counters her with evidence, claiming that the temple's examination confirmed the candle contained some form of magic. Garrett coldly asserts that, in accordance with the law, until Hakan returns, Lucina must remain confined to her room. This news terrifies Lucina, causing her to tremble with fear. Meanwhile, in Mezerlik, after placing Lakin's body there, Hakan pays his last respects to Lakin, vowing to bring the murderer to justice. He instructs them to proceed with the procedure immediately and to return as soon as they are finished. Hakan can't help but express his concern about leaving Lucina alone, fearing that something might happen to her in his absence. Back in the palace, Lucina is consumed by depression following the recent events. She is so lost in her thoughts that she doesn't even notice Puka's presence as he comes to visit her. Puka watches her from the window, clearly concerned about her well-being. Suddenly, two masked men approach Lucina's room from the outside. Sensing a dangerous situation, Puka decides to take flight and find Hakan. The window in Lucina's room shatters and the assassins make their way inside to abduct her. Lucina desperately tries to call for help, but her cries go unanswered. Garrett, who orchestrated this scheme, smirks with satisfaction as she believes that Lucina has been taken away by the assassins and will soon meet her demise, making it nearly impossible to find her body. The assailants forcefully take Lucina on horseback, covering her mouth and binding her hands. 
Puka watches in growing concern. However, a sudden downpour prompts them to seek shelter in a nearby cave. Realizing the opportunity to escape, Lucina gathers her courage and makes a run for it. Unfortunately, she trips and falls, injuring herself and causing her to bleed, which only heightens her fear. As the assassins prepare to carry out their deadly intentions, a group of knights arrives and quickly eliminates them. Lucina wonders if Haken has come to her rescue. However, as the knight draws near and removes his helmet, Lucina is taken aback when she recognizes him as her stepbrother from Berg. In the Tayar Palace, Haken has returned earlier than expected. As he walks through the palace, he encounters a concerned guard who seems troubled by Hakan's arrival. On his way to visit Lucina, he crosses paths with Titi and inquires about any recent developments during his absence. Titi explains that Garrett has accused Lucina of using dark magic and subsequently confined her to her room. Upon hearing this, Hawkins' anger flares, finding it hard to believe that anyone would give credence to Garrett's claims. He swiftly makes his way to Lucina's chamber, and as he opens the door, he is met with the shocking sight of an empty room with shattered windows. Prior to this, Lucina's stepbrother had encountered an unknown wizard who presented him with a solution to his ongoing predicament. His life had taken a turn for the worse after the last attack by Tayar, and the wizard assured him that the king's anger would soon subside if he brought Lucina to him. This is why he is now saving Lucina from the assassins with the wizard's assistance. The wizard conducts a quick examination of Lucina's unborn child, and they receive the reassuring news that the baby is in good health. Lucina's stepbrother expresses his relief upon hearing this. Though it leaves Lucina puzzled as to why he is so concerned about her child's well-being. As Lucina's stepbrother instructs his knights to take her with them, she adamantly refuses, insisting on returning to Tayar. His patience wears thin, and he berates her for enjoying a life of happiness in Tayar while he and his mother have been living in poverty. He raises his hand to strike her, but their confrontation is interrupted by a resounding roar from above. In a surprising turn of events, Haken, in his dragon form, appears flying overhead. As he spots Lucina on the ground, he descends rapidly. Lucina's stepbrother is left bewildered, as his knowledge indicated that Haken was away for some time and he also realizes that the wizard has already fled the scene. Hakan, consumed by rage and having returned to his human form, unleashes his fury upon the knights, instructing Lucina to close her eyes for her safety. When he confronts Lucina's stepbrother, who trembles in fear, Hakan angrily accuses him of attempting to kidnap his wife once again. Lucina's stepbrother desperately tries to explain that there is a misunderstanding, but Hakan pays no heed and swiftly eliminates him on the spot. Lucina, in tears and trembling, implores Hakan to stop. He rushes to her side, expressing his deep concern for her after witnessing her distress. Lucina, exhausted, requests that Hakan take her back to the palace as she is emotionally drained. The following day, back in the palace, Lucina is resting and receives a checkup from the priest who reassures Hakan that the baby in her womb is healthy. He advises Hakan to get some rest, as he has gone without sleep for several days. However, Hakan declines the suggestion, determined to resolve the matter at hand and make sure that those who dared to frame his wife face justice. The day of reckoning for Garrett finally arrives. With her hands bound, she awaits her judgment. Hakan, as the king of Tayar, charges Garrett as the mastermind behind the dark magic conspiracy. Upon hearing this, Garrett attempts to evade responsibility, claiming ignorance. However, Hakan remains resolute and orders the guards to bring Gilai before them. Gilai begins to confess everything. He admits to practicing black magic at his sister's behest for a prolonged period even as he suffered from the adverse effects of dark magic. Despite Gile's testimony, Garrett still clings to denial, insisting that it's all a falsehood. Unmoved by her protests, Hawken reveals that Garrett's own maids have provided incriminating statements. 
Garrett, now pallid and terrified, faces her sentencing. Hakan, taking into account her use of dark magic to harm Tayar's queen and king, strips her of her former queen consort title and sentences her to death. However, Jile pleads with Hakan to consider his sister's punishment, acknowledging his own complicity in her actions and her dedicated service to Tayar. Other attendees also join in, beseeching Hakan to reconsider. In light of these pleas, Hakan revises Garrett's sentence. Instead of death, he orders her to be imprisoned in the Southern Palace, marked as a reminder of her crime. Jile, too, faces consequences, but because he fully confessed his actions, Hakan decrees that he shall bear a visible mark on his body and endure hard labor as his punishment. A few days later, in Lucina's chamber, her somber mood persists due to the news about Gile. Recognizing her distress, Hakan attempts to lift her spirits with some heartening news. He reveals that, during a meeting, it was decided that Lucina would be appointed as the temporary queen. The notion that she would become queen, even if only temporarily, overwhelms Lucina with disbelief. However, there's a catch. She can assume the role of queen after the wedding ceremony. Hakan's eagerness grows as he alludes to another surprise in store. He signals for Titi to open the door, revealing Ader's presence. Lucina's face lights up with joy at the sight of Hakan's mother. Yet, it becomes apparent that Adar hasn't fully regained her mental faculties, as she struggles to recognize Lucina. The lingering effects of black magic continue to cloud Adar's mind, and Hakan is determined to help her break free from its influence. Lucina, eager to offer assistance, extends an invitation for Adar to reside with her in the palace. She suggests that they seek Gile's help in dispelling the lingering black magic, reasoning that the one who cast it may also possess the knowledge to undo its effects. Although initially hesitant, Hakan ultimately agrees with Lucina's proposal. In Berg, Lucina's stepmother, Baroness Berg, paces anxiously, awaiting her son's return. When a woman with striking features, blonde hair, and silver eyes, accompanied by her retinue of knights, approaches her, Baroness Berg is both startled and angered by this unexpected arrival. The woman greets Lucina's stepmother with an air of casual familiarity, only to have her shocked questions regarding her abandonment of her own daughter hurled back at her. It is then revealed that this enigmatic woman is Lucina's birth mother and she coldly informs Baroness Berg that her husband and son have already met their demise. Baroness Berg is devastated and refuses to accept this grim news. However, her denial is abruptly cut short as she begins to cough up blood, collapsing to the ground. Lucina's birth mother, wielding dark powers, is responsible for her sudden and fatal affliction. Lucina's birth mother, undaunted, asserts that with Lucina's child safely on the way, she is poised to become the genuine queen of Tayar, rendering the Berg family no longer of use to her. She coldly declares that, once Lucina's child is born, Tayar will unquestionably belong to her. A month following Lucina's assumption of the temporary queen role, tranquility reigns within the palace. However, a notable disturbance arises as King Hakan requests Gile's assistance in dispelling black magic from Adair. Gile informs the king that Adar's consciousness is gradually returning, yet full liberation from the dark enchantment remains incomplete. Upon this revelation, Hakan instructs the guards to return Gile to confinement. When Gile encounters Lucina, he attempts to avoid eye contact burdened by guilt for his actions. Subsequently, Hakan extends an invitation to Lucina to accompany him on a visit to Adar. As they stroll together, Lucina discerns a troubled look on Hakan's face, prompting her to inquire whether he harbors any reluctance to see Adar. Hakan confides in her, expressing regret that he couldn't personally attend to Adir and delegated the responsibility to Garrett leading to the imposition of the black magic on Adder. In response, 
Lucina offers words of comfort, assuring Hakan that Adar will not hold any resentment towards him. Upon entering Adar's room, Hakan and Lucina are taken aback as Adar unexpectedly recognizes Hak Khan, evoking a deep emotional response from him. Although Hakan expresses regret for not arriving sooner, Adar, in turn, laments the loss of control over her own mind, causing harm to Hakan. She sincerely apologizes for the harsh words and actions directed at him. Witnessing this touching reconciliation unfold before her, Lucina experiences a profound sense of relief. Following that, Adar summons Lucina, indicating a desire to share something with her. Puzzled, Lucina awaits in anticipation. As they take a seat together, Adar begins expressing gratitude to Lucina for the compassionate care she provided, even during Adir's distressed state. Additionally, Adair conveys her heartfelt wish for Hakan and Lucina to enjoy a happily ever after. Reflecting on her past, Adar shares the story of how she ascended to the throne of Tayar. At that time, she faced the challenges of being kidnapped and compelled into marriage with the king of Tayar. Her struggles were compounded by her lack of affection for her husband, as her true devotion lay with her children. Eventually, Garrett assumed the role of queen, driven by personal desire, which ultimately led to greed and self-destruction. Adar confides in Lucina, highlighting the stark contrast in Lucina's motives for becoming queen, driven by genuine love for Hakan. Adar places her hope in Lucina and Hakan, trusting them to lead Tayar to even greater heights. Evidently, Puka observes them from a distance in his bird form, patiently awaiting Lucina to bring him the peanut. While soaring through the air, Puka notices a pigeon flying nearby, bearing a message on its foot. Intrigued, Puka decides to trail the pigeon. Upon reaching its destination, the pigeon taps the window with its foot, signaling that the message is intended for Marissa, the dragon slayer and Lucina's birth mother. The contents of the message detail the current situation in Tayar. Watching from a distance, Puka ponders the identity of the woman who bears an uncanny resemblance to Lucina. Upon hearing the woman mention Lucina's name, Puka ponders whether she is acquainted with Lucina. To his astonishment, Puka almost becomes visible to the woman. He swiftly conceals himself and hastily returns to Tayar. A few days later in Tayar, Hakan surprises Lucina with an abundance of baby toys and tools despite having only one child at the moment. Happily, Hakan reveals his desire to have another child with Lucina, eliciting a joyful smile from her as she eagerly expresses her shared wish. While grasping Lucina's hand, Hakan expresses his gratitude for her healing ability, ensuring a safe journey through childbirth. He reminisces about the past, recalling when Lucina utilized her healing powers to mend him back in Brian. Inquisitive, Lucina questions why, if healing abilities were crucial in Tayar, Hakan didn't bring her there instead of leaving her in Brian. Hakan explains that, at the time, he believed Lucina had a family awaiting her in Brian, and bringing her to Tayar might have resulted in repaying kindness with hostility. However, he expresses regret, as Lucina faced mistreatment from her family, and had he known earlier, he would have protected her. Lucina playfully taunts Hakan, jesting that it's because of him she couldn't escape at that time. However, she quickly reassures him, acknowledging that fate ultimately brought them back together to this point. Lucina expresses her happiness about being with Hakan, and as Hakan shares his feelings, they seal the moment with a shared kiss. Following Hakan's departure, Puka arrives and knocks on the door. Lucina welcomes Puka inside and hands him a pouch of nuts. She expresses her concern for not having seen him in a while. Puka informs Lucina that he was pursued by a group of birds and shares that he visited Brian. There, he spotted a woman resembling Lucina in Berg House. A sense of foreboding washes over Lucina upon hearing this news. Puka advises her to confide in Hakan about it as he shares a similar uneasy feeling. Uncertain, 
Lucina inquires about specific details regarding the woman, and Puka describes her as having blonde hair, reminiscent of Lucina when he first met her. Perplexed, Lucina questions the connection, prompting Puka to elaborate. He suggests the possibility that the woman might be a shifter, a creature with the ability to assume the appearance of another person. Despite this, they remain uncertain about the shifter's motives. Suddenly, Titi interrupts to inform Lucina that Adar wishes to meet her. Sensing the need for privacy, Puka swiftly requests permission to depart, reminding Lucina to keep their conversation confidential before taking flight. After welcoming Adar into the room, Adar articulates her purpose for visiting Lucina late at night. While in a conscious state, Adair discloses to Lucina that she had been conducting research on how to ensure the safe childbirth of a guardian dragon's child. Unfortunately, Adair couldn't complete her work as Garrett had cast black magic on her, fearing that the research would jeopardize her position as queen. Upon hearing Adar's explanation, Lucina, resolute, declares her intent to carry on with Adair's research. Initially concerned, Adar is reassured by Lucina's strong determination, as Lucina expresses her desire for other women to safely give birth to the dragon's child. The following day, during Hakan's visit, Lucina presents him with Adir's research book and discloses her intention to carry on Adar's work. Concerned for Lucina's well-being, especially considering her current pregnancy, Hakan worries about the physical toll of research. However, Lucina proposes involving Gile to assist her. Initially taken aback, Hakan eventually agrees, understanding Lucina's strong determination to pursue the research. Having obtained approval from Hakan, Lucina calls for Gile to come to her palace. Perplexed, Gile is taken aback that Lucina herself summoned him. Lucina clarifies, expressing her need for his assistance in continuing Adair's research and assuring him of her trust. Relieved by Lucina's words, Gile agrees to lend his help. With a designated workspace already arranged, Gile can promptly embark on the task. Grateful for the opportunity, he is determined to work diligently to bring back Lucina's smile. Immersed in his workspace, Gile is engrossed in continuing Adair's research. Unexpectedly, Hakan and Lucina visit to assess Gile's progress. Hakan inquires about the status, and Gile reports that things are progressing well thus far. However, as Hakan and Lucina prepare to leave, Gile halts them and poses a question to Hakan, who looks wary and asks for more details. Gile then discloses his desire to conduct research on Lucina's healing ability, expressing the potential benefits for Tayar if it could be transferred to others. To achieve this, he explains the necessity of obtaining a blood sample from Lucina. Hakan initially appears displeased, but Lucina promptly agrees, expressing her willingness to assist. While Hakan, still harboring reservations, is concerned for Lucina's well-being, Lucina, with a resolute gaze, asserts her belief in Gilai's honesty. Eventually, Hakan grants approval for Gilai's request. Some time later, Lucina is in her room, having just completed a lesson where Adar taught her the rules in Tayar. Adar observes Lucina's growing belly and notes that a guardian dragon's child tends to develop faster in the womb compared to a human child. Concerned about Lucina's well-being, Adar expresses worry, but Lucina reassures her that she is feeling fine. Subsequently, Adar requests permission to take her leave. Contemplating whether her healing ability contributes to her overall well-being during pregnancy, Lucina is interrupted by a knock on the door. Hakan, wearing a bright smile, enters, revealing that he has completed his tasks, even though Tehran is seeking him out for additional work. Lucina anticipates news about a response from Cameron, but Hakan, brimming with excitement, shares a different piece of good news. He enthusiastically describes plans for a new queen's palace for Lucina, adorned with gold. Despite Lucina expressing contentment with the current palace, Hakan insists on providing her with the very best. 
aspiring for Lucina to be hailed as the greatest queen in Tear's history. While Hakan continues detailing his plans for the new queen's palace, Lucina abruptly interrupts with a question about the response letter from Cameron. Hakan's demeanor becomes somewhat subdued as he conveys that they have not yet received a response from Cameron. This news causes Lucina to feel concerned, wondering if Cameron has chosen not to assist them. Meanwhile, in Jilly's workspace, he is deeply engrossed in his research on Lucina's healing ability. Utilizing Lucina's blood sample and mixing it with the provided liquid, Gile is taken aback when a surprising reaction occurs, leaving him shocked. Gile finds it hard to believe, based on his knowledge. The reaction indicates that Lucina possesses the blood moon. Doubt creeps in, making him question the accuracy of the result. Just as he contemplates the possibility of error, a guard interrupts his deep thoughts, inquiring about the progress of the research. Gile hesitates to disclose his recent discovery, but ultimately opts to keep it concealed. Instead, he informs the guard that he requires more time to finalize the research. In her chamber, Lucina appears deeply engrossed in reading Adir's research notes. Hakan, present to accompany her, expresses concern for Lucina working so diligently. He endeavors to care for her by providing food, but as Lucina catches a whiff of the meal, she feels nauseous and is on the verge of vomiting. Worried, Hakan promptly summons a priest to examine Lucina. It becomes evident that Lucina is experiencing morning sickness as a result of her pregnancy, a detail Adder had previously shared. The priest explains that every woman may have different symptoms. And for Lucina, certain foods may be triggering the sensation of nausea. Hakan, concerned for Lucina's well-being, wonders which foods she can consume without experiencing discomfort. As Hakan walks alongside Tehran, his contemplative demeanor catches Tehran's attention, prompting concern for his well-being. Hakan opens up about Lucina's condition, leading to Tehran eagerly suggesting that he knows of a cure. He details a rare fruit found in the South that could alleviate Lucina's symptoms, although it's difficult to find. Unfazed, Hakan asserts that nothing is impossible. Without hesitation, he commands Tehran to prepare his horse as they gear up for the journey. Sometime later, Hakan pays a visit to Lucina, presenting her with a sack of fruits that are rumored to alleviate her nausea. Intrigued, Lucina questions how Hakan acquired them, but he casually insists that it was an easy task. However, Tehran, skeptical of Hakan's claim, discloses the true story. Hakan, almost forcefully, obtained the fruits. When they went to the market to locate the fruit, the seller revealed that someone had bought the entire stock. In response, Hakan instructed his guard to apprehend the buyer. Upon locating the person, Hakan demanded all the fruits, offering a sum of gold in exchange. Upon hearing the tale, Lucina feels a wave of relief. Grateful that Hakan didn't resort to force, yet, Faced with the abundance of fruits, Lucina acknowledges that she can't consume them all. Nonetheless, she expresses her heartfelt gratitude to Hakan for his concern and thoughtfulness. Wanting to share the fruits, Lucina invites everyone to partake in them. A couple of weeks later, in the Temple of Brian Kingdom, Cameron receives news. A servant informs the Holy Emperor of Brian about a batch of letters that took some time to check. The Holy Emperor examines the letters and discovers one from Lucina. The handsome figure with long blonde hair, recognized as the Holy Emperor, displays a surprised expression upon seeing the letter from Lucina. The following day, Tehran eagerly tells Hakan that the awaited response from the Holy Emperor has been delivered. As Lucina peruses the letter, her countenance becomes grave, eliciting a smile from Hakan as he observes her expression. Within the correspondence, the Holy Emperor conveys his intention to visit Tayar in the near future. This revelation astonishes both Lucina and Hakan, sparking excitement as they contemplate the possibility of the Holy Emperor personally bestowing the sacred relic upon Tayar. Yet, Hakan appears apprehensive, contemplating the undisclosed motive behind the Holy Emperor's visit. 
as it remains unmentioned in the letter. Despite this uncertainty, Haken remains hopeful that it signifies a positive development. Several days elapsed, and Tehran received the command to accompany the Holy Emperor on the journey to Tayar. After riding for a considerable duration, Tehran proposes a brief respite. The Knight Templar courteously notifies the Holy Emperor of their intention to pause, momentarily before proceeding to Tayar. Observing the Holy Emperor, Tehran reflects on his remarkably youthful and handsome appearance, seemingly defying his presumed age of over 80 years. Tehran contemplates whether Haken might harbor any displeasure upon meeting the unexpectedly vibrant Holy Emperor. Meanwhile, in Tayar, Lucina immerses herself in the preparations for the banquet to welcome the Holy Emperor. Witnessing Lucina's unwavering determination, Haken commends her, likening her to a true Tayar queen. However, a tinge of disappointment lingers within Hakan, as the adorned setting was initially meant for their wedding. Lucina, in response, insists on repurposing the decor to welcome the Holy Emperor. They had previously debated the matter, with Lucina arguing that the sudden nature of the visit left them with limited time for elaborate preparations, necessitating the use of existing resources. Prompting Hacken to reluctantly acquiesce, allowing Lucina to proceed with her chosen course of action. Nevertheless, Lucina assures him that the dress prepared for their wedding won't be used for this event. Abruptly, Hacken inquires about the gold coin Lucina had requested earlier. Lucina clarifies that she distributed it among the diligent servants as a token of appreciation. Upon hearing this, Hacken expresses his pride in Lucina affirming his belief that she will evolve into a wise and benevolent queen. In a hurried manner, Titi relays the news that Tehran and the Holy Emperor have arrived in Tayar. Hakan appears slightly uneasy, stating his intention to personally welcome them and instructing Lucina to continue preparing for the banquet. En route to the gate, Hakan reflects on the peculiar circumstances surrounding the Holy Emperor's sudden visit to Tayar after two decades of non-intervention. He contemplates the improbability of an 80-year-old emperor making such a journey to Tayar. As the Holy Emperor disembarks from the carriage, he expresses gratitude for Hakan's warm reception during this unexpected visit. Hakan, laying eyes on the Holy Emperor for the first time, registers surprise at the emperor's apparent lack of aging, prompting speculation about the potential use of holy power to maintain youth. Greeting the holy emperor, Hakan extends his hopes for an enjoyable stay in Tayar, to which the holy emperor responds with a smile, affirming that he has eagerly anticipated this moment. On the night of the banquet, Lucina experiences a sense of nervousness, Given that this marks her inaugural attempt at orchestrating such an event, Titi, observant of Lucina's uneasy demeanor, provides words of encouragement, reassuring her that everything appears to be flawless. Lifted by Titi's encouragement, Lucina regains her confidence. The procession commences at the entrance, with the Knight Templar leading the way, followed by the Holy Emperor escorted by Hakan. The sight of the Holy Emperor surprises everyone, drawing remarks even from Titi, who notes the Emperor's youthful and handsome appearance in stark contrast to his expected age. As Hakan offers a reassuring smile to Lucina, signaling the moment to greet the Holy Emperor, she approaches with respect and extends her greetings. With a radiant smile, the Holy Emperor seizes Lucina's hand, expressing his immense joy at meeting her. Swiftly, he bestows a kiss upon Lucina's hand, a gesture that both annoys Hakan and leaves Lucina in surprise. Maintaining his hold on Lucina's hand, the Holy Emperor reveals that he came to Tyre after reading her letter. Lucina is taken aback upon realizing that the Holy Emperor's visit is directly tied to her correspondence. In response to this unexpected development, Hakan intervenes, pulling Lucina's shoulder to his side and separating her hand from the Holy Emperor. He smoothly mentions the readiness of the palace dancers to present their performance. Attempting to manage a smile, 
Hakan adds that discussions about the holy relics can follow after the dinner. However, the holy emperor dismisses the prospect of discussing holy relics at the moment, emphasizing his primary intention to converse with Lucina. This revelation leaves Hakan visibly displeased, and Lucina struggles to believe that the holy emperor's visit is centered around her rather than the holy relics. Following the dinner, Lucina dedicates her time to the holy emperor, as per his earlier request. Meanwhile, Hakan seethes with anger while waiting for Lucina outside. Anxious to discern the true intentions of the Holy Emperor, Hakan approaches Tehran, inquiring about any insights into the matter. With hesitation, Tehran reveals that he overheard discussions among the Knight Templar, suggesting that the Holy Emperor decided to visit Tayar promptly upon reading Lucina's letter, without seeking permission. This revelation only intensifies Hakan's anger. In an attempt to offer reassurance, Turan suggests that the Holy Emperor may be drawn to Lucina's healing ability. Despite this, Hakan grapples with concerns about the significant age gap between Lucina and the Holy Emperor, wondering if he should be wary of the Emperor's potential interest in Lucina. Trying to quell his own worries, Hakan decides not to dwell too much on it and asserts that they should await the conclusion of the conversation between Lucina and the Holy Emperor. Meanwhile, the Holy Emperor prompts Lucina to share details about her childhood and the initial discovery of her healing ability. Anxiously, Lucina discloses that she is the illegitimate child of Baron Berg, recounting the animosity she faced from Baroness Berg, who harbored intense hatred towards her. Lucina explains that during instances of mistreatment, she noticed her wounds healing as she touched them. Despite being aware of her ability, Lucina admits to seldom utilizing it. The Holy Emperor's countenance reflects sadness as he attentively absorbs Lucina's narrative. Suddenly, he inquires if Lucina harbors any resentment toward her parents. Lucina dismissively shakes her head, asserting that she never had the luxury to entertain such thoughts. Her primary focus was solely on survival. She adds that, in her perspective, if her birth parents were truly good individuals, they would never have abandoned her in the first place. Upon hearing this, the Holy Emperor's expression darkens, and he extends an apology to Lucina, expressing regret that he did not arrive sooner. Perplexed, Lucina wonders about the reasoning behind the Holy Emperor's apology. However, Lucina reassures that she is content, now that Hakan is by her side. Joyfully, she shares that both she and Hakan are deeply in love with each other. The mood takes a serious turn when the Holy Emperor, with a stern demeanor, encourages Lucina to speak candidly and questions whether she is genuinely satisfied living in Tayar. Outside the room, Hakan's unease intensifies as he paces anxiously. Observing his restlessness, Turan attempts to pacify him, mentioning rumors that the Holy Emperor already harbors affections for someone. Turan describes the woman as resembling the moon, adorned with silver hair and eyes. This revelation only serves to aggravate Hakan, realizing that the woman the Holy Emperor loves bears an uncanny resemblance to his wife. Observing Hakan's intense reaction, Turan grows concerned that Hakan might resort to forceful entry. Promptly, Turan interposes himself, preventing Hakan from advancing further, asserting that Hakan shouldn't succumb to jealousy regarding the Holy Emperor. Acknowledging the validity of Turan's words, Hakan, wearing an irritated expression, contends that it's merely been an extended period since Lucina engaged in conversation with the Holy Emperor. Hakan, disclaiming jealousy, insists that his concern is solely rooted in the fact that the Holy Emperor has yet to partake in his dinner. Subsequently, Hakan raps on the door, inquiring whether Lucina and the Holy Emperor are still within. Turan breathes a sigh of relief, grateful that Hakan refrained from forcing his way in. Responding to Hakan's call, Lucina seeks permission to open the door, leaving the Holy Emperor with a somber expression. Once Hakan enters, he queries Lucina about the content of their lengthy conversation, 
expressing concern over the elapsed time. Lucina, anxious that Hakan may have overheard the Holy Emperor's previous inquiry, frets that Hakan might become angered. Hakan then suggests to the Holy Emperor that if their conversation has concluded, they can proceed to enjoy the banquet. Maintaining a smile, the Holy Emperor discerns the underlying concerns in Hakan's words and decides to conclude the discussion. However, he requests a brief respite before joining the banquet, prompting Hakan and Lucina seek permission to depart. While making their way back to the banquet, Lucina detects a peculiar expression on Hakan's face and inquires if there's an issue with the festivities. Hakan reassures her that the banquet is perfectly fine, but the issue lies within himself. He candidly admits to feeling foolish, confessing his lingering jealousy towards the Holy Emperor. Hakan reveals that despite recognizing Lucina's feelings for him, he can't shake the discomfort of witnessing her alongside the Holy Emperor as they appear destined for each other. In response to Hakan's heartfelt confession, Lucina envelops him in a warm embrace, offering words of comfort and urging him not to be too hard on himself. She empathizes with Hakan's emotions, acknowledging that she too would feel the same if he were with another woman. Nevertheless, Lucina, with a loving smile, reassures Hakan that she will always stand by his side. Suddenly, Lucina recalls the earlier inquiry from the Holy Emperor about her feelings in Tayar. In response, Lucina expressed genuine happiness in Tayar, crediting Hakan for saving her. However, the Holy Emperor conveyed regret and disclosed his desire for Lucina to accompany him to the Great Temple. In that moment, Lucina sought clarification, questioning whether the Holy Emperor meant for her to leave Tayar. Before she could continue, Hakan knocked on the door, abruptly interrupting Lucina and leaving her sentence unfinished. Now, she reflects on not having provided a proper response to the Holy Emperor. Feeling the need to give the Holy Emperor an answer, Lucina requests permission from Hakan to return to him. She assures Hakan that she will come back promptly, prompting a smile from Hakan, who grants Lucina permission to leave. Upon returning to the Holy Emperor's chamber, Lucina is warmly welcomed, as he foresaw her return for a proper response. Lucina firmly declares that she harbors no intention of leaving Tayar, especially now that she is pregnant and destined to become the Queen of Tayar. The Holy Emperor then discloses the underlying reason for his invitation, revealing that if Lucina remains in Tayar, both she and her child will be in jeopardy. This revelation shocks Lucina, prompting her to inquire about the nature of the threat. The Holy Emperor explains that there is someone with ill intentions toward Lucina's child, posing a significant danger that would be challenging to mitigate in Tayar. Consequently, he earnestly implores Lucina to accompany him to the Great Temple, expressing confidence in his ability to ensure their safety there. Though visibly concerned, Lucina asserts that the decision is not hers alone to make. She requests time to discuss the matter with Hakan before reaching a resolution.